that she's still the best shooter on the team. And then she sends me that clip. She's like, you're right. They share a They share a community. They share a health. I'll tell you what. In the coaches versus kids game, I'll take the, uh, they share I'll take desire her as my first pick. Just the other to win the championship. Stoney, the number she one. Let's get it done yeah. right now. Yeah, for sure. Final roller coaster as he watched his group overcome defending champions Griswold. Bailey's energy drives this team, and a win over Stonington will cement these seniors into Wheeler lore. The sun shines brightly on two teams with one goal win it all. It's the Division II ECC Boys Championship between Wheeler and Stonington from the Mohegan Sun, and all the action is live on game day on the day.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mohegan Sun Arena for the 2024 ECC Boys Basketball Tournament Championship Games. Game number one tonight features the number two ranked Wheeler Lions. Taking on the top seeded Bears of Stonington. Before we meet tonight's starting lineup, I'd like to address your attention to the big board as we meet the players in tonight's game, brought to you by Game Day and The Day. Kyle Kessler, North Stonington Christian Academy. Nate Main, North Stonington Elementary School. He's already North Stonington Elementary School. Kyle Montigny, North Stonington Elementary School. DeAndre Bransford, Huntington Elementary School. John Anderson, North Stonington Elementary. Garrett Linehan, North Stonington Elementary. Sean Burgle, North Stonington Elementary School. Wyatt Elliott, North Stonington Elementary. Brody Pappas, Preston Veterans Memorial School. Mason Perkins, North Stonington Elementary. Jason Crewswitch, B. Quaker Hill Elementary. Zane Brewer, Navy Base Primary School, Singapore. James Mann, North Stonington Elementary. Robert Scavello, Aaron Lopresto, West Vine Elementary. Aaron Veslowski, William Keene Elementary. Dylan Samini, Alex Nowak, Precious Memories Preschool. Brady O'Neill, West Vine Elementary School. Cole Phelan, Alex DePerry, Dean's Mill. Cole Inchi, Dean's Mill Elementary School. Sean Nurum, Dean's Mill. Patrick McGugan, Miss Homesteads Preschool. Brian Wolfred, Dean's Mill. Luke Hoagland, Homeschool. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet tonight's finalists. First, we begin with the number two seed in Wheeler, currently 16 and six on the year, wearing their maroon uniforms with white and black trim, puts their ticket to the sun with wins over Plainfield and Griswold. Coached by Stephen Bailey, put your hands together, Lions fans. Here's your starting five. At guard, a 5'8 senior, number one, Kyle Kessler. At guard, a 5'7 senior, number three, Keith Zardes. Starting at forward, a six foot senior, number five, DeAndre Bransford. At guard, a six-foot senior, number 33, Jason Krusewitz. And at guard, a six-foot-three junior, number 34, Zane Brewer. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the top seed in Stonington. Wearing their home whites with brown and gold trim, they knocked off Montville and Tortolot to earn a trip to Mohegan. 
currently 16 and 6 on the year. They are led by head coach Jay Rosencraft. Make some noise, Bear fans. Here's your starting five. At guard, a 5'10 senior, number zero, Robert Scavello. At guard, a 5'9 senior, number one, Aaron Lopresto. Starting at forward, a 6'1 senior, number five, Dylan Samini. At center, a 6'8 junior, number 10, Alex Nowak. And starting at guard, a 5'10 senior, number 14, Alex DePerry. Ladies and gentlemen, your officials tonight, Mr. Rob Bono, Mr. Roger Warner, and Mr. Anthony Mailhots. At this time, we'd ask that you all please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that's good begins with a smile at Waterford Dental Health. Your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you the personalized dental care that you deserve. So contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com. The ECC Boys Basketball Finals are brought to you by Phillies. At Phillies, we bring the taste of Philadelphia to you. No shortcuts. We only source authentic products such as steakhouse ribeye and Philadelphia baked Amoroso rolls. So come on through where everyone is family. That's PH family at Phillies. And you know what goes great with a Phillies cheesesteak? Some freshly squeezed juice. What are the keys to today's game, coach? Excited about this one for Stonington. Value the ball. Wheeler plays aggressively on defense. Must limit turnovers by using ball fakes and making good passing decisions. Get back. The Lions like to get out in transition and have good team quickness. The Bears must get back on D and prevent easy baskets and dominate the paint. Use your size to get scoring opportunities inside and extra shots with offensive rebounds. For the Wheeler Lions, five on the board. Stonington has a little bit of a size advantage. Box out and limit second chance opportunities. No nickel dimers. Can't get in foul trouble tonight. Play aggressive defense without reaching in and fouling. And play together. Keep the blueprint the same. Solid team basketball. Share the ball and take and create good shots for each other. Thank you for joining us live from Mohegan Sun. It's the Division II ECC Boys Championship. Robbie Bono, our official, tosses it up in the air, and the tip is won. And into the hands of the Wheeler Lions, and they'll have our first possession. Stonington Beers, man to man. Kessler with DePerry on him, swinging around now to Zardes. DePerry. Such a good defender for Stonington, and that's going to be a key. Will the Bears lock in defensively against this team? Nice job by Zardes, but the shot no good, and Bransford, the biggest little center in all of the ECC, with the follow. Wheeler Lions also man-to-man. -man. 
to Perry. Cut off by Kessler. Those guards of wheel are very active. The over-under on cheap fouls is four. Over-under on steals is about seven and a half. So that's the key. Can they get more steals out of those hands than they can fouls? First turnover, Stonington Simony walked. Back to the Lions. You know, well, this Lions team, this has been a, a long time in the making for them. They've gotten closer and closer every year. This is their best chance at it for this group of seniors who have been playing together since third grade. Zardes with a jumper, no good. Nowak with the rebound. DePerry's gonna push two on one. Find Simony running the floor, and we're tied at two. And a good transition opportunity. The rebound and the run out. Stonington gets. Stonington can get some of those. They'll be able to extend their pressure on Wheeler. The Brewer kicks it back to Kessler. Brewer we saw in the semifinals can score in a lot of different ways. Kind of a threat for them. Clock now shot down to seven. Kessler drives, blocked by the Bears, DePerry in the other direction, pulls up, no good. And look at the strong rebound from Krizowitz. He goes down hard. He's fired up. He's an energy guy for the Wheeler Lions. Yeah, he's like that old time WCW wrestler. The guy that comes out to wrestle against the, the star. You know, like John Hall, and he puts up his, his fist in the air. Iron that's, Mike Sharp. That's what, exactly. Barry, Barry O. That's what Chrisowitz reminds me of. <laughs> Barry Horowitz, I'm, I'm all over it. <laughs> Sports Doctor knows those guys, too. Kessler drives, hangs in the air. He's going to draw the foul, and he'll shoot two. So Kyle Kessler will go to the line. Kessler, very aggressive here. Nice hang, gets the bump, and he'll shoot a pair. Yeah, and that... Right now, I think Wheeler's made an effort to try and get to the basket. Both teams playing aggressively man-to-man -man defense. A lot of seniors on the court. Big contrast to our second game tonight, but eight seniors, two juniors, so a lot of experience. And from what I hear, Casey, a lot of these guys are friends with each other. They've grown up playing ball to each, with each other. This is not really a traditional rivalry, a uh, crosstown rivalry. These are more of, of friends. Well, as mentioned in the open, the school is separated by seven miles. They share a community. You know, they play on the same Little League teams together. They say, play on the same Rec League teams together. They share gym space. Stripped, Nowak comes down with it and off it goes of Scavallo. So, Scavallo, so these guys know each other really well. They're good friends. The head coaches are good friends. Jay Wozencroft, Stephen Bailey, good friends. These guys share gym space and practice with each other, play on the same teams all summer. So it's not a traditional rivalry, except familiarity breeds contempt. Bransford with the nifty reverse. And Stonington extended some pressure. Wheeler was ready for it. Bransford gets the easy hoop. I mean, I think as much as you want to beat your opponents, you want to beat your friends more. Bransford with a rebound off of Lopresto miss. Bears not finding the buckets right now, and Wheeler settling in nicely. Shout out to a very good Wheeler student section, school of 200 plus kids. It feels like half of them are here right now. Great look underneath, pump fake, Krizowitz blocked, no way. Not here, says the big fella. Hanging in the air, oh, nice body control. Scavello with the basket. You know it's a big game because not only is the number one Wheeler alumni, the sports doctor in the house, but they brought the mascot tonight. The Wheeler Lion is here with the cheerleaders. And there's Brewer, nifty move on the baseline. He's a good scorer. Yeah, he's very versatile. They list all five players as guards on this Wheeler team. Gonna get a foul on the floor. That's gonna be on Zardes, that's his first. Keep an eye on the fouls of Zardes in particular. He is super active, he's a frenetic defender, but he does have a tendency to pick up some fouls similar to that one. And Wheeler, though talented, not really deep. Samini, long three, back iron from Lopresto. 
Nice hustle from Samini, but out of bounds to Wheeler. Yeah, the, the three point, we've mentioned it during our broadcast here at the Sun, the, the three point shot is not always the same backdrop. It takes a little while to get used to it sometimes. See if that affects the shooters tonight. Zardes, they're giving him the three. Now Kessler drives baseline on DePerry. Krizowitz steps inside the three-point line, no good. And Samini with the rebound. Crossover, DePerry, foul line jumper short. Oh, Samini hustle, blocked by Bransford. Samini hustles again, rebound by Bransford. Excellent block by Bransford on that first shot. Bransford running the floor, and he felt the presence of the big guy. Yeah, he's going to be a big factor, no pun intended. Uh, really can protect the rim. We saw on Saturday how a guy like Jacob Francis was really able to control the interior for Fitch against New London. I think Nowak can do the same tonight for Stonington. DePerry misses the jump shot. Zardes has Brewer ahead of everybody. Samini hustling back, but Brewer gets there, and there's the timeout for Coach Rosencroft, because the, what did you say? What was the number one, or number two, key to the game, right? Beatles, get back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they love to run. Uh, transition is their game. Coach Bailey has built this team on man-to-man -man defense and transition offense. Traditionally, they will shoot a lot of threes, you know, but I think tonight they wisely have made a concerted effort to not settle. They, they settled for one long three that was off the mark, and a couple open threes they had, they passed on it in favor of trying to take a closer shot. So that's gonna be their, their blueprint and their game plan, and Stonington's gotta make sure that they get back on defense. I feel like almost all of North Stonington and Stonington is, is here tonight at Mohegan Sun. Great crowd for this first game. Uh, dignitaries, luminaries, lots of big time people. The sports doctor, you were listening in, what do you got? All right, Casey. Coach Steven Bailey says, let's keep sharing the basketball. Passing it, moving around, and finding easy looks off a of transition. Jay Rosencraft says, we're watching too much. They're coming off of a rebound, it's one and done, and we're not getting back, so one team is engaging, another team is kind of like watching a little bit, but Stephen Bailey loves the way his team is playing out of the gate. And Sports Doctor loves the Lions mascot, Great. Roaming, the, roaming the baseline. Nah, he's gonna have a picture taken with the pregame, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, Wheeler got out to a fantastic start against Griswold in the semi, and then had a stave off, a fearsome, Griswold rally. Yeah, that was a roller coaster uh, ride for Coach Bailey. They went from up 15, 16 to down seven and felt like they had no answers and then came back and settled it. Nowak gets the pass in the lane, gets his own rebound and puts it back. So that's one thing that Wheeler will have to contend with all night, just the pure length and, and size of Nowak. Yeah, I, I would keep trying to get him the ball inside and see if you know, they could create some foul trouble or some mismatches. Zardi's no good, Nowak with the rebound. <laughs> Samini for three. Good! Dylan Samini knocking down the triple, and that brings the Bears to a point. Yeah, the inside out three. The mistake was made when they allowed the dribble penetration to the middle. It draws the help side and leaves the open three in the corner. Look for Kessler to get a little more involved here offensively as well. We know he's their like, you know, number two scorer after this guy, Brewer. Can't get it to go. Nowak rips it down, and the Bears have a chance to take a lead. And they're going to get a foul on Brewer. Lepresto went strong to the basket, and Lepresto Changeo drew with the foul and goes and shoots a pair. Yeah, here you see the nice crossover and was able to draw the foul, but it's, it's Nowak right now has been the factor that has turned the tide. As well as Wheeler played, right now, Stonington can take the lead. Uh, talking to Coach Rosencroft, they're, they're frustrating for him because when they commit defensively, 
when they commit to getting back, and that's part of the a defensive commitment, you know, the transition game. He said they are electric and they, you know, they run good teams out of the gym. He said when they don't, they're, you know, they let anybody in the game and they give up leads. So, and you know, Wheeler is going to take advantage of every opportunity that Stonington gives them. And the, one, and the one thing that Wheeler, you know, they really haven't been able to sustain offensive runs. And again, we're seeing that they were going through a little drought right now. And it, and it starts with the defensive pressure from Lopresto on Zardes. I mean, you know, all the talk of Zardes and Kessler for Wheeler, you know, Lopresto and Scavello can be equally menacing and DePerry. And a tr uh, travel on DePerry as he was trying to get it into the high post. 107 remaining here in the first period. Three turnovers for Stonington. Bransford sets the high screen for Kessler. Double screen. I like that set, though. Double screen. And Kessler just came up a little short. Another rebound for Nowak. Three. It's good. Lopresto. And the Bears have a four-point lead. From way downtown. Kessler can't get it to go. Tip off of Wheeler. Stonington ball. Shot clock off. Let's see what the Bears want to do here. Up four, and they can have the last shot if they want it. Scored the last 10 in a row, Casey, to go from down six to up four. Lopresto, shot clock off. They'll looks like they'll hold. Zardes comes out on Lopresto. O'Neal in the game as well for Stonington. High screen, Nowak. Lopresto drives, hangs, no good. Tip, loose on the floor. Zardes comes out of it, three seconds, two. Good if it goes, just off the iron. We're at the end of one. The Stonington Bears shake off some early rust. They're up four. Second quarter action coming up on the other side. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. All that is good begins with a smile. At Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Part of our commitment to serving our patients includes providing information that helps them to make more informed decisions about their oral health needs. Our website is a resource we hope you'll find both useful and interesting. Contact us today at waterfordentalhealth.com. Second quarter action about to start. The sports doctor is lurking somewhere out there with a fan. Sports doctor. Oh, Casey, basketball takes the village of Alex DePerry's father here, Josh. And talk about Alex's journey through basketball. Two trips here to the Mohegan Sun. How proud are you of him? Extremely proud. Um, you know, the first game, the first time he was here, they, they won. So, you know, he's been on a mission to get back here. So we're hoping we have success today. And you know, all the time and effort that he's had to get here. So it's, it's been a great journey watching him play through the years. A lot of work as a parent goes into these things. A lot of time, every every day of the week pretty much we put into this. So it's great to see that they're here, you know, and you know, hopefully we have a great, great outcome. Great turnout by everybody in Stonington High School, Casey. Parents, friends, family, everybody included. Back to you guys. Big crowd, the student section for Stonington has turned out as well. The, the entire, you know, like I said, the entire Stonington, North Stonington populace appears to be in the crowd tonight. Bears will have it with a four point lead. Lopresto off of a screen, Zardes on him. Bumps, gets to the hoop, no good. Look at Bransford boxing out Nowak, giving up eight inches. Turnover the other way, though. DePerry ahead, Lopresto. And Kessler got there from behind and reached in, grabbed the foul. Look at the hustle here, though, for Kessler. Busting to get there. He's going to make him earn it at the free throw line, so Lopresto will shoot two. 
And Lopresto has also been a big factor here now in the last few minutes. He hit the deep three. He's also quick and strong, can get to the hoop. And Wheeler's gonna have to make an adjustment on how they guard him. That's a confident free throw, by the way. That's a, that's a kid who knows he can knock him down. Get it, get yourself set, and just look like one dribble. That's a very confident free throw. Seven Big, points for Lopresto. Biggest lead of the game so far for Stonington is six. Wheeler was up six in the other direction, and it's been a 12-0 run since then. Yeah, the, the Stonington man-to-man -man defense is no joke. They're playing great. Beautiful look from Brewer to Krizowitz, and an easy two for the Lions. And baseline drive, draws the help side, and good recognition on the pass. DePerry hangs in the air, no good. Nowak pushed off, and they're gonna get him for it. And he's saying, what? That's a good call, though. Anthony Malhoy, one of our three fabulous officials, along with Robbie Bono and Roger Warner. And you can see there, Nowak got his hands in on him. And he's so long, he doesn't need to push. I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> I mean, you know, two, two short guys over here. You and me, on a, <laughs> you can get on my shoulders. Zardes, high off the glass, the soft kiss brings Wheeler to within a basket. Nice drive. Samini, baseline jumper. O'Neal with the rebound and the putback no good. And a nice awareness by Scavello. He was in the right spot and he got it up. Wheeler's giving up too many opportunities on the offensive glass, Stonington. Yeah, that was key number three for Stonington, dominate the paint. Zardes, stutter steps, floats no good, but Kessler on the weak side, untouched with the follow. Yeah, missed box out there. Caught watching the paint dry. Presto, oh, the little left-handed scoop. Yeah, he's been terrific. They have to adjust how they're guarding him. They cannot guard him so close like that with no help ready. He's too good. Brewer, spin, shot from the elbow, nice touch. Zane Brewer's a good scorer, and that's a nice, confident stroke. Both teams starting to heat up. Nothing but next. Zardes drives, stripped, and will get a foul. And the call, I think, Lopresto with the hold. And Zardes will shoot two. You see here that little stutter step, and yeah, oh, yeah. Lopresto got him. Hundred percent, hundred percent. That was the in-out dribble. He faked the crossover. Now, we don't say this often, but all 10 starters for the two teams have scored in the game. That's outstanding, that's equity, good sharing. Surprised they called that one on the floor, They though. did, yeah, on the floor. Definitely looked like he was in the act of shooting. Brewer, blocked by Nowak. Krizowitz kicks it out, three for Zardes. Good! Three from number three. Inside out threes, I love them. Nowak with the left hand. Brewer comes down with it. Up ahead, tipped. Bransford keeps it alive. Gotta get back. Nowak, and now Stonington's gonna have numbers. Samini underneath with a great rebound. Scavello is gonna draw the foul, and that one, uh, Wheeler's not exactly sure where that one came from. I think, I think Scavello was in no man's land. And he got a little bump from Brewer, but that's one of those dogs chasing the car. What are they gonna do when they get it? I mean, Scavello was in no man's land underneath the basket, and I think that's a little bailout on Brewer. It started with a decision to throw the touchdown pass. 
It got deflected. Bransford thought maybe it was off of him. He tries to save it. He gets caught 90 feet away. Stonington has the odd man rush. Two missed free throws, so the basketball god said it wasn't a foul. Brewer with a wild circus shot, reverse off the glass, and we got a brand new ball game, tied at 23. This has been a good one. That's off of Stonington. Kessler with DePerry on him, no call. Krizowitz, well, Brewer from the parking lot, no oh, good. Holy smokes. Check that glass for a dent. Lepresto kicks. Samini for three, short. Zardes with the rebound. That's phantom defense by Stonington right now on that. They gotta be careful. Zardes out of control and Nowak says no thank you. So no thank you taste is what they call that. To Perry dribbles it off his foot. Now Wheeler with the greased pig. Bransford blocked get by back. Scavello and a oh. timeout which I think is a great timeout by Jay Wozencroft, basically to put the circus tent back <laughs> on top of what was happening right there because that was back and forth with no purpose. Although they were gonna have a, a, a five on four break. But I'm not sure if that's a good thing. I don't know, you're right. I, he knows his team better than me. It but. felt like it was just getting very frenetic with no, no real end game to it. But once again, it, it's Nowak that's, you know, thwarting the Wheeler drives to the basket. He has been a factor. And if he keeps playing like that, well, Stonington's gonna be in good shape. Three minutes, nine seconds remaining here in the half. We're tied at 23, it's the Division Two. ECC Boys Basketball Championship live from Mohegan Sun. Of course, eight o'clock will have Division One between Fitch and St. Bernard's. Sports Doctor, you were listening to the Stonington Huddle. What did you hear from Coach Wozencroft? Well, two words, slow down. Let's take our time, let's relax a little bit. You know, it's a tie ball game. We're, we're rushing into things and we're getting real sloppy out there. So good timeout, call us that piece and let's go. Nowak gets it, guarded by Brewer, spins. That's too easy. Love that call. I love the set. Get the big guy involved down on the block. Yeah, they just got to keep feeding him. That is that is a mismatch, and if he can make that shot, it's going to be tough to stop. Brewer pulls up. He was bothered. Bransford blocked by Nowak. Kick out. Zardes for three. He will, no, with a double dip off the rim. That's probably good from the high school line. He, Shot it from the WNBA line. I thought that was going to be one of those double touch and falls. Just slipped out. Pretty jumper from Scavello right at the free throw line. And just like that, a little four point mini run for the Bears. And Jerry Wo Wozencroft with the smart timeout as 4 0 run since he called it. Brewer doesn't like what he sees on the baseline. Kessler, pump fake, off the glass. That's a beautiful move. Veteran play from Kyle Kessler. Yeah, both teams seemingly know how to get their shot against their opponent. The strength of Lepresto, because Zardes got his hands on that ball, and Lepresto just powered through it. Off Wheeler, out of bounds. Stonington will have it, and Lepresto will inbound. One four low play here out of bounds to the ball screen. Hanging in the air, Scavello. Stonington's got two or three guys who can score the basketball. Absolutely, very balanced. You don't really know where that next shot is gonna come from. Zardes wants Brewer. Brewer back to Zardes. They're letting him have that long three. Instead, he pulls up from the free throw line. No good to Perry. Rips it down, he's gonna run. Beautiful look underneath Scavello running the floor. 
Coach Bailey does not want the timeout, but he does want his kids to settle it down. 10 for Scavello. Brewer. We're gonna get a reach on the floor. We're gonna call that on Samini. Both teams well below the mark. I think they're gonna call that a shooting foul. Yep, Brewer's gonna shoot two. Wheeler evidently doesn't realize it because there's only got one guy at the line. <laughs> O'Neal's gonna check back into the game for Stonington, and Samini's gonna come out. Well, Wheeler hasn't made a substitution either. So that extra 10 feet, you know, maybe they should just start him back. Brewer misses the second one, and DePerry goes up high for the rebound. Three, no good, Zardes with the rebound. Should be noted, Alex DePerry's sister played on this floor one week ago in the championship game D2 for the Stonington girls. They did not get the result they were hoping for. Brother Alex hoping for a better result. Brewer for three, got it! Zane Brewer with the three ball. 12 for Brewer. From way downtown, Casey. Bang. Five seconds remaining in the half. Lopresto, Scavello, double crossover, three. Good if it goes. It's just shy. And the Stonington Bears will take a two-point lead into the half. Sports Doctor is going to talk to Coach Jay Wozenkoff and see what he has to think about his team's first half performance. Sports Doctor, you got the coach. Coach in the locker room taking a two-point lead with you. They called a timeout late in that first half. Did you like the guys? How do you guys responded? 100. percent um, We got to slow down. We're, we're playing way too fast. I, I'm gonna look at the possessions in the back, but we're, we're gonna tire out. We got to we got to slow down. Get the ball to the big guy. Um, but I can't complain. We're up 31-29 going into halftime. So it is what it is. What do you do better in the second half to defend that guard play? It, it's. The, the guard play is fine, it's the back end. We're not rebounding. We got guys coming in the game not rebounding and helping out on the back side. We'll be all right, though. We'll make the adjustments. We'll be good. All right, good luck, Coach. 16 minutes away, Case versus Wheeler. Good one. Here at the most sun. We're at halftime. The got it of the week brought to you by my guys at CNS Pawn. Go see Sock and Chippa down at CNS Pawn and tell them you got it because they want it. Let's check out our got it of the week and some highlights. We'll come back on the other side. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Oh no, my shoe's untied! Got it! Do you, you got it? Yes! Got it! Got it! Got it! Got it! Got it! Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. The Got It of the Week was brought to you by CNS Pawn. You got it? They want it. Call my guys, 889-PAWN, located in downtown Norwich. Whatever you got, they want. And just like game day, they got it. Before every ECC basketball game, student athletes read a sportsmanship statement, asking fans to, quote, leave disrespect and hateful speech out of our gyms. Those words are especially personal for Wheeler senior DeAndre Bransford after something he heard on the baseball field as a freshman. He just turned around and said DeAndre is the N-word. And it was with the hard R, which is, to me, very disrespectful. And all, the whole usage of the N-word is very disrespectful, especially if you're an, a white student speaking to an African-American student. Bransford and his principal, Kristen St. Germain, started an ECC diversity council. Started something that like I believed in personally, and me and my principal were able to come together to start a council around the ECC and it's about inequality in our schools and mainly in sports and how we can like fix it. It's been 
very successful with our messages before the games. And I feel like fans might have settled down a little listening to the athletes who are talking. That Bransford would step up to make his voice heard was no surprise to his basketball coach, Stephen Bailey. DeAndre, you know, is the heart and soul, right, in our locker room. He's our vocal leader, does a great job um, in the huddles, in games, you know, being our center, being an undersized center in the league. You know, he gets that rap of always oh, a small guy, but he's got a big heart. He plays hard. He works hard. He's going up against the 6'3s, the 6'5s, all these guys, you know, taller than him, but it never deters him, you know. He, plays hard, he's boxing every time, he's rebounding every time, he's jumping on loose balls. In a way, the undersized Bransford is an apt representative for Wheeler, the smallest school in the conference. I believe that if you come from something small, you can build it up, especially being at one of the least diverse schools in the ECC and being able to start that, I think it proves that any kid that anything is possible, you can start anything if you really believe in it. If I can do it, you can do it, and that's what I really stand on. Though Bransford is in his last year of high school, he hopes the work he has started with the Diversity Council will continue. My goal is for the people who come up after me to not have the same experiences I've had in high school. And if this leadership conference can hold like a little bit, like a little out of time, and we, if we get more kids, then I feel like my goal is being completed. Here at Game Day, we're proud to bring you unrivaled video coverage of local high school sports, all of it free for you to watch. These videos are not free for us to produce them. If you'd like to ensure that we can keep covering your school and your teams, there's a few ways that you can support us. Go over to patreon.com slash the day and sign up to make a small recurring contribution. Think of it as a tip to the Game Day crew for what they do. Want to show your support in a more visible way? Hit up our merch store and pick up some game day gear in your school colors. Our camera operators are always looking for those shirts and hoodies in the crowd, and you may see yourself on our next live stream. We get a lot of support from businesses in our community. And if you'd like to join them as a sponsor, send us a message and we can connect you with our advertising staff. Finally, The Day is the organization behind everything we do here at Game Day. If you want to support The Day's community journalism, Consider a print or digital subscription at theday.com slash subscribe. It's time for Game Day's Grade 8 Plays of the Week. At number 8, Waterford Basketball's Juan Morrell. The steal, the speed, and the poster in front of the home folks. Lancer Nation loves it. At number 7, New London's Christian Ortiz. Wrestling at 157 pounds in the state open, showing a little bit of tenacity, perseverance, wins 4-2 in overtime. At number six, how about the coach, former NFA great Courtney Gomez, the coach from downtown, got it, coach can still play. At number five, Fitch Co-op Swimming, Evan Hespeler, Wins the 100 Butterfly in 55-63, swimmer of the meet. At number four, Natalie Guzman, Killingly Gymnastics in the Class S Championship. On the beam, scores a nine, helps Killingly to a second place finish. At number three, Tatiana Irizarry. We've seen her in the ECC Tournament Finals. How about a win in the girls 107 pound state championship with the pin. Good job, Tati. At number two, Trinity Ambruso NFA Gymnastics, a 9.7 on the bar. Highest all around score at the Class L Championship. 9.5 in the ball, 9.6 on the uneven bars, 9.6 on the floor. She lit it up with moves like this one. Oh, that's just nasty. Great job, Trinity. But at number one, Lincoln Carlson, East Lime Norwich Tech Wrestling, the 175 pound state open champion. No one has beat Carlson. An easy 8-2 decision for the championship. Those are your grade eight plays of the week. Send us your clips and maybe you can make next week's Grade 8.
We're back at halftime, a two-point Stonington lead. And you know these two teams, every time they play coach, feels like two points is about right. It's been a two-point game this year in overtime. Stonington won at home. Two-point game last year. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights of how we got to this two-point lead. Yeah, Wheeler got off to a fast start. They were up 10-4 early. Shots like this from Bransford. But Stoningham, Stonington has multiple ways that they could score the basketball. And I thought the big fella, Nowak, made his presence felt inside. And that really turned the tide. Stonington went on a big run to take the lead. As you see a couple of deep threes that they hit during this first half run. But Wheeler battled back whenever they were able to get a clear lane to the basket and Nowak wasn't there, they were able to get a bucket. This guy is gonna be a factor down the stretch. Lopresto has been tough to stop off the bounce and can also hit the three. So Coach Stephen Bailey's gonna have to make an adjustment on how they guard both him and the big fella, Nowak. You know, I think that the veteran leadership is apparent on both teams, right? Scavello, Lopresto, DePerry. So we're gonna talk about what these two teams need to do differently in the second half. It's time for our second half adjustment, brought to you by the folks at Casey Chiropractic, located in Colchester, Connecticut. Dr. Casey and his team are all about total body wellness. Whatever you need to feel better, get yourself up and moving from head to toe, Casey Chiropractic is gonna take good care of you. Now, how do I know that? Because Casey goes to Casey. I've never felt better. I'm moving better than ever before. And after two games here tonight, I'll be right back at Casey Chiropractic tomorrow. So, Coach, what kinds of adjustments do you want to see from these two teams heading into the second half? Wheeler, I think, has to make a couple defensive adjustments. I think they have to find a way to get earlier help on Lopresto. They can't let him get going north-south. He's too crafty and too strong. They also have to find a way to not let Nowak get too deep. A lot of times, Stonington is keeping him out at the high post, but if Stonington makes a concerted effort, they, they ran a play late in the second half where they had him dive to the basket, and when he gets it on the block, he basically, it's, it's like a mic and drill. There's nobody on Wheeler that can disrupt that shot. So they're gonna have to meet him high, not let him get low post position. For Stonington, Coach Rosencroft touched on it. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's not play too crazy. Slow it down, execute, but also make sure we're securing rebounds. Don't get out scrapped for those 50-50 balls and offensive rebounds. So I want to give a shout out to everybody in Stonington and North Stonington because the atmosphere here for this D2 final is fabulous. The crowd is full, as big as we've seen for the opening game in a long time. Sweet Caroline playing on the, on the PA, people dancing, locked and full. Also want to give a shout out to my guy, Bill Bassetto, J.R. Chaponi, representing the uh, Wayne Potvin Scholarship Fund. They're up on the concourse talking about the Potvin Scholarship, accepting donations. The Potvin Scholarship has given out over $50,000, you know, last year alone uh, in scholarships to local athletes. So it was great seeing them up there. Uh, you know, the crowd is full. There's people everywhere. I am very excited about this second half, Juice. Sports doctor, what are you thinking? Yeah, I was in the Wheeler huddle there, Casey, coming out, and Coach Stephen Bailey said, sharing the basketball and defense will win us this championship. It's ours to take, let's go get it. Set play to Brewer, so bad of a, of a miss that he got his own rebound, and then blocked by Nowak, it'll stay Wheeler ball. So the good news is, great opening set. Bad news is, Nowak's decided to be the equalizer tonight. Kessler, that's going to be short. Nowak's bringing it down, and the Bears will have their first set of the second half. And a yep. much more deliberate Bears team here. Yep, Wheeler staying in the man-to-man. -man. Zardes with Lopresto. Lopresto has him on his hip, and there's Zardes 
with that jump ball. Two on one with Bransford. And we're tied at 31. Amir Gray and Keith Zardes are the two best at that anticipation steal on the dribble. He steps into that lane so well, takes that dribble away from the opposing guard. Good ball screen. Lopresto misses the three, and Bransford goes up high for the rebound. Bransford dumps down baseline to Kessler. Kessler spins, kicks out. Zardes, they're challenging him to take the three. He crosses over instead. And it's saved into the hands of Lopresto. Good transition defense from Wheeler. They got back set up. Scavello, Nowak dumps it down and Samini can't make the bunny. Kessler ends up with it. That was a good look for Stonington. Yeah, it's good. Good pass by Nowak. Brewer, left hand off the glass. Sweet touch, Zane Brewer. 14 for Brewer, that's tough. He's a righty. That was a nice little lefty floater. He might have to score 30 a game next year with, when they lose all the seniors, and he might. <laughs> he'd, he'd, he'd be glad to. He might, he has the capabilities. Running the floor, Bransford ahead of everybody. That's what Stonington did like, and immediately a timeout as Wheeler has taken a four point lead and just out hustled Stonington. It's been a game of runs, and yes, that's all this is, is hustle. Kessler gets the rebounds. One of the smallest guys on the court getting the defensive rebound, and then Leak out from Bransford. Great pass up ahead. Stonington's got to play with a little bit more urgency. It kind of, maybe the slowing it down, you know, maybe took some of the urgency out. But what I would like Stoning to do, to do a little bit more of is get rid of that high ball screen. But let's, let's find a way to get Nowak the ball down low using back screens. They ran a little set late in the first half that I really liked where he came off a back screen and they dumped it down to him. But also, your guards are, are good enough to go by the Wheeler guards without a ball screen. So I, I don't think you need it. I think you just play some motion offense and try to get the ball inside. You also get him in position to get an offensive rebound that way. Nowak, hands off. Lopresto, quick trigger three. Good! Aaron Lopresto knocks down another three. Lead cut to one. Quick release from Lopresto, and once again, like I said at halftime, Wheeler's got to dedicate somebody to stay on him a little bit tighter. Hustle by Bransford will keep the ball with Wheeler. Zardes will inbound. Nice set inside Kessler, but he had kind of a tough angle at it. DePerry pulls up from the free throw line. No good. Brewer decides to slow it up. Stonington one of five from the field to start the third quarter. Kessler to Brewer. Gets a screen from Krizowitz. Brewer floater is good. Zane Brewer feeling it right now for the Lions. He's tough, he's so versatile. You saw he could hit the deep three, he could drive it. He's got a little bit of a post game as well. Bransford will get the foul called on him as he went for the block on his fellow number five, Samini. Yeah, got him on the arm, good call. Well, it, it starts with the land on two. You know, you land on two, you give the little hitch, the little ball fake, and you get the defender in the air. This is how Stonington can settle it down now. Get to the free throw line, get a couple easy ones, exhale. Gotta knock him down now. Crowd still filtering in here as we have 
Game two at 8 o'clock. The Fitch Falcons and the St. Bernard Saints. Second one gets the soft, friendly touch roll. And it's a two-point game. Wheeler still has not subbed. They are going to ride this five. Kessler, pump fakes. Tries to get contact. Bransford with an unusual three. And off Kriswitz out of bounds to Stonington. Cole Phelan will check into the game, and Nowak will take a breather. Let's, this game has been a game of runs, but yes, Coach Wozencroft has used his bench. But Coach Bailey has all his timeouts. So I would imagine, come the fourth quarter, he can use some of those for rest, as well as strategy. Well, you, you, we usually see some of Kyle Montigny. Nice take to the basket by Robbie Scavello. We're tied at 37. Yep. 12 for Scavello. The last two possessions, Stonington's taken it to the basket, not settling for jump shots. Kessler drives, draws contact, and he'll shoot two. Phelan was up in the air, and he got the, the bump. The jab right went left. Good call. It's good to remember that we saw Montigny go down in the semifinal with a leg injury, and he got up, but we don't know the extent of, of what that feels like for him. And Wheeler does not normally go very deep anyway. You'll see Montigny sometimes. You'll see Anderson once in a while. But for the most part, they don't go more than seven deep anyway. Yeah. And they've avoided foul trouble up to this point, which would be one of the determining factors in why they'd have to go to the net. Right. And I thought that was a critical component to this game. They, they could not get in foul trouble early, and they did not. And that includes Zardes with that, you know, what we see right here, those reach. The presto over the top of Bransford, high off the glass. Tied at 39. Steele running the floor, two on one. DePerry behind the back loses it. And it's going to end up with Wheeler. Hustle plays going to determine this game. Perry loses it. Here's that 50-50 scrum. Good call by Anthony Malhoy. And you see Brewer off camera going, guys, let's settle. Settle down, settle down, because this is that. We got this way in the first half, too. Mm -hmm. We know Coach Wozencroft doesn't like it. He knows that he wants them to be a little more deliberate. He said, we're going to wear out if we keep playing at this pace. Double teaming Bransford. He takes it over the top and nails it. Heart and soul. DeAndre Bransford. Long three. Just off the front. Samini gets the rebound back to DePerry. DePerry pulls up just inside the free throw line. No good. Zardes will push. Brewer has it up top. He's going to give it off to Kessler, and Wheeler will run a set play. Two minutes remaining here in the third period. Kessler launches a three. Got it! Kyle Kessler knocks it down and gives the Wheeler Lions a five-point lead. No hesitation on that one. Scavello hangs, draws the foul on Krizowitz, and he'll shoot two. Yeah, definitely. He got Krizowitz on the overplay. Wheeler foul number 33, Jason Krizowitz, his first. But you look at Scavello at the line, he, they're tired. Both teams pushing themselves, running the floor. Stonington subbing in, but they're, they're worn out. Yeah, and that's why when you get to the free throw line, you know, you get a chance to catch your breath. Nowak got a lot of minutes to rest, though, so he should be coming in fresh. Yeah, and Brady O'Neill checking into the game as well. He's going to give Samini a break.
Good free throw, knocked it down to a three point lead. Wheeler gets very deliberate now. Coach Bailey wants a good set every time. Kessler, scoop shot, draws the foul. That's, that's just basketball IQ right there. He sensed where the player was and made sure to throw up a shot so that he, because he knew the contact was coming. That's just savvy. That's a Chris Juicy like move. <laughs> wow, a compliment. Unfounded, but I'll take it. Well, I, I got to think that, <laughs> that you as a, let's call you an, an undersized guard. Yeah. Knew how to, knew how to get a guy on your hip and, and make, you, make yourself a little bigger than you might be. I think all undersized guards need to find a way to get the ball up quicker. Yep. Or else you don't get a shot off. That is correct. <laughs> it's all angles. <laughs> it's all angles for the little guys. Lead back to five after two Kessler free throws. Scavello, no, Bransford with the rebound. Quietly with a minute and change remaining, Wheeler can go up three possessions. Lopresto tried to get in front of that pass, knocks it out of bounds. Wheeler will keep the basketball and Brewer will inbound. In the corner, Kessler with the jumper, splash. Kyle Kessler on the heels of Zane Brewer, the dynamic duo for Wheeler and the lead is seven. He's feeling it now, 15 for Kessler. Lopresto hangs no good, Bransford weak side rebound. Shot clock still on, but Wheeler with a seven point lead in the basketball quietly taking a commanding lead here. Bransford knocks it down. Everybody's feeling it for the Lions right now. Six straight possessions, Wheeler has gotten points. 12 for Bransford. That's three Lions in double figures. DePerry drives over the top of Bransford, no. Nowak with the rebound, spins, no. Krizowicz, yes. Up ahead, Bransford, does he get it off in time? Good if it goes, basket is good at the buzzer! DeAndre Bransford running the floor! And the Wheeler Lions at the buzzer of the third period have their biggest lead of the game. Fourth quarter action coming up. You're watching game day live on theday.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. A happy sports doctor, I'm sure. He has a happy parent sports doctor. Who are you talking to? Uh, a hot hand from Kyle Kessler, the woman responsible for that. is his mom, Jessica. Jessica, is it nerve-wracking and fun watching his son at the same time? I'm shaking, and it's so nerve-wracking. It's so fun, it's so exciting, but they put so much hard work and effort into it. They work so well together as a well-oiled machine, as the team, it's amazing. Well, they're all your kids too, are they not? They're all my kids. I'm the school nurse, so they're all my kids. Every every bump and burn and rash and snipple, you've been there for all of it. I mean, how proud are you of this group right now? I am so over the moon proud for this team right now. I, I, I am just over. I've seen them from middle school on up, and they have just put so much work in outside of the season and during the season, and they just they just work so well together. They're great. All right, the hot hand, Casey. A lot of motion down here in Wheeler Country. Thank you, sports doctor. I, you know, seeing the parents and a, as someone who's got a high school athlete himself and goes and, and you know paces nervously, uh, you know, I know how invested the Wheeler community is. What a great turnout here tonight. That last possession, I think, was really indicative of what's so great about Wheeler, right? They withstand the on the defensive side. They look up and run the floor. They've got three guys with more than a dozen points. Bransford, Brewer, Kessler, kind of all taking turns right now. 
Yeah, I mean, this team is built on balance. And, and that's why that was one of the keys for them. Coach Bailey, assistant coach Kevin Noonan, giving me, you know, some of the insights from Coach Bailey's brain. And, and what the message was after the semifinal Saturday was, let's not play selfishly. Let's play together, share the basketball. And they have done that tonight. Double digit lead for the Lions. The Bears need a good possession here to open up the fourth quarter. Scavello drives, gets to the basket and scores. That's exactly what the Bears needed. Yeah, this game's far from over with the way that Stonington could score the ball. They could shoot it. I think at some point they could also try to ratchet up some pressure. They have the athletes to do so. The one difficulty that Wheeler presents, or one of the difficulties that Wheeler presents for a team like Stonington when they have a lead is that Wheeler doesn't rattle. The seniors have been here before, and they kind of have a good idea of when they need to you know, turn it up a little bit. Offensive foul against Lopresto lowered the shoulder. Yeah, you see the push off with the left hand there on Zardis. That's a good call. That's the thing. I mean, Stonington can make runs. We saw them do it against Turtlelot. But this particular Wheeler team is kind of run proof in some respects because they've got multiple guys who can score and they just know how to get it done. I mean, Kessler and Brewer in particular have so many ways they can score the basketball. Brewer to Bransford on the cut. Zardes with an open three, short, but Bransford knew where to be, blocked by the big guy, Nowak. And there's Zardes from behind with a steal. There's the trap. Timeout, Wheeler, good play by Brady O'Neill to form the trap on Zardes, so. 30-second timeout. Now, you know, Stonington's got the scorers, and I said that in some respects, Wheeler is run-proof because they've got so many different ways to score the basketball. But we saw what can make a run-proof team runny, and that's the big guy, Nowak. So, you know, it's one thing to say Wheeler has multiple ways to score, but when you've got a, a racer like Nowak in the middle, that does change things the other way, too. Yeah, and we saw Griswold was able to go on a run uh, because they were able to hit the long shot. So if, if Stonington could hit a couple threes, get a couple turnovers, this game's far from over. Remember, it's championship time now, you know, so every play carries a little bit more weight. Stonington is far from out of it. Wheeler has to continue to execute and take good shots. Brewer will inbound. Pulls it out. Bransford comes and sets a screen for Zardes. Zardes tried to do a little give and go, but Bransford was a step late. Stonington comes the other direction. Lopresto all the way to the basket. No. And the big guy over the top, Nowak and Krizowicz. Kurt Rambis-like with the rebound. He's, he's the man. And if you don't know that reference, you should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> go Google it. <laughs> after not turning the ball over. Oh, Bransford got Nowak in the air. Finishes and will go to the line. Beautiful dump down by Brewer. Beautiful awareness by Bransford. Basket is good and Nowak took a shot to the mouth. <laughs> Nowak fouled him with his chin. After, I was about to say, Casey, after not turning the ball over, in the entire third quarter, Wheeler turned it over twice in their first four possessions, but Bransford just what the doctor ordered with the and one. Kind of a indignity and metaphor that Nowak gets caught for the foul and got punched in the mouth doing it. Mm. Scavello, Krizowicz with the block, Samini running the floor and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Good hustle by Dylan Samini. Yeah, that's, Stonington's gotta attack that glass now. It, the time is, is passed to, to watch your teammates shoot it. Expect it's gonna be a miss, crash, be physical. Put the game, you know, when you're behind like this, you gotta put the game in the hands of the referees. The you, 
Go ahead, Casey. No, I was going to say, the, the, the best thing I did, I mean, I'll let, you, I'll let you expound on that a little bit because I don't want to circle back to where you started with it, though. Finish your thought, please. No, I'm just saying, you know, there's no point of, of trying to avoid getting a foul here in the fourth quarter. you got to be super aggressive. And that's kind of, every time Stonington has gotten a little bit of behind, they've made a, an effort to get to the basket. And I think that's the fourth time they've drawn a foul. And you're right, it settles things for them in a lot of different ways. Easy points, no time off the clock, guys get a chance to take a breather. All good things happen when Stonington gets to the line. Kessler touches the baseline on his dribble drive. So that's three turnovers now this quarter for Wheeler. Once again, they had none in the third. Still down 10, and it doesn't feel like 10. Scavello back to DePerry. DePerry crosses over Kessler. Pump fake, jump shot, no. Brewer rips it away from Nowak. Good decision by Kessler to bring it down and run some traditional offense. Brewer, silky smooth. Foul is going to be called outside on Zardes. He and Lopresto have been banging all night. That time, Lopresto got position, turned him around a little bit, and threw the foul. Yeah, that has been a fabulous matchup to watch. On the other side, Brewer has 18 for the Lions. He's been fabulous. DePerry, long three, no good. Good box out from Brewer. Excellent box out. Good hands from DePerry. Stays with Wheeler. 12-point lead for the Lions. And 435, we're starting to get to that time where Stonington's going to have to up the tempo. Yeah. Maybe a little pressure. Took the words out of my mouth, Casey. It's close to the time that they're going to have to start trapping. Travel by Zardes. That helps the Bears' case. Fourth turnover now. Listen, that's, it's that fourth quarter, you know, it's that it's that championship quarter. You got to earn it. You got to finish. Lopresto and Scavello have gotten to the basket, but they turn it over this time instead. Brewer, and here comes a little bit of urgency because Wheeler's going to get this thing to under four minutes if they want to. Yeah. Now's the time to go four corners. Take a little air out of the ball. Kessler drives with the wild left shot. Body control, hangs in the air. Kyle Kessler's been dynamite. Don't need four corners when you got Kyle Kessler. 14 point lead and the basketball and the Wheeler Lions are starting to feel it. And is the crowd ready to go with them? Yes, they are. Brewer pulls up. Short, good rebound. Samini, two on one. Scavello draws the contact on Brewer, and he'll go to the line. And there's, again, what did Stonington need to do? Get to the line. Mm. Would have been nice to get the and one here, so. Good foul by Brewer. Make him earn him. Not going to give up an easy transition layup. Third on Brewer, not, not enough for concern yet, but a fourth one, you know, at the three minute mark might make it a little interesting. Scavello knocks it down. Again, you want to stick around after this game, uh, eight o'clock tip for a new, the uh, division one, uh, St. Bernard Saints and Fitch Falcons. Second one is short, but Nowak, Rebound, why'd you put it on the floor? Chrisowitz with the double fist pump. First kid I've ever seen in high school fist pump when he made a free throw. <laughs> the kid is energy and excitement all the live long day. Pressure here by Stonington, the little man. Zardi splits it. 
and a timeout. Wheeler with 321 remaining. They're gonna talk it over and set up the last three minutes oh. and 20 seconds. It's a full timeout. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back down the stretch. Lions lead by 13. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Here at Game Day, we're proud to bring you unrivaled video coverage of local high school sports, all of it free for you to watch. These videos are not free for us to produce them. If you'd like to ensure that we can keep covering your school and your teams, there's a few ways that you can support us. Go over to patreon.com slash the day and sign up to make a small recurring contribution. Think of it as a tip to the game day crew for what they do. Want to show your support in a more visible way? Hit up our merch store and pick up some game day gear in your school colors. Our camera operators are always looking for those shirts and hoodies in the crowd. And you may see yourself on our next live stream. We get a lot of support from businesses in our community. And if you'd like to join them as a sponsor, send us a message and we can connect you with our advertising staff. Finally, The Day is the organization behind everything we do here at Game Day. If you want to support The Day's community journalism, consider a print or digital subscription at theday.com slash subscribe. Oh, the Wheeler faithful YMCA in it right now at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Their team has a 13 point lead and the basketball and they are starting to feel like celebrating. Zardes underneath Bransford. No, it was altered by Nowak in the other direction. Lepresto, now Nowak underneath. Beautiful look and Samini finishes. Still plenty of time left with the three point shot and the shot clock. Foul out the outside on Nowak. It'll be his third, the team's third rather. Team's third foul. So they still got a couple left here. Get the ball in Kessler's hands and they do. Screen, baseline jump shot. Kyle Kessler with ice water running through the veins. And now he has 19 to lead all scores. To Perry, no. Bransford, what a rebound. DeAndre Bransford. Krizowitz is ahead of everybody. And the Lions are running up 15. The fist pump from Krizowitz. Lepresto on cue, gets to the basket, draws the foul, he'll shoot two. But look at the, you know, there's the reach and the bump that can call it on multiple people. But I can't say enough about Jason Krizowitz. I mean, he got me, he gets me excited. We're gonna see our first sub in the game for Wheeler here in a moment. Sports Doctor, you've been, you've been hovering down by the Wheeler bench. Sports Doctor, what do you, uh, what do you got down there? Well, that last time out, Casey, Coach had talked about it. It was A, to give his group a little bit of rest, tell him to relax a little bit. And I think he's going to use his timeouts down the stretch just for this set. Set something up, get his team a little blow. Kessel's a little shaken up right now. He came out. But just let's gather ourselves. And why not call a timeout before each possession here? I think it's a little cramping for Kessler. One of two, Montigny's into the game for Wheeler. The foul goes on Lepresto. Zardes draws the foul. That'll put both teams at four, which means both teams are shooting two the rest of the way. Two minutes remaining in the ball game. So Kessler goes out, Wheeler brings in another senior. Montigny, he of the state playoff football team in the Griswold Wheeler Co-op. So he knows a little bit about big time sports. And he finds Bransford, who can't get it to go, but Montigny goes up high, wrestles it away from Nowak, and earns the possession for Wheeler. Championship plays are made in the fourth quarter, and Wheeler keeps making them. What even is a bear? Well, it's a mammal native to North America. 
Some's in brown, black. If you go to the Arctic, you can see them in Alaska. They're white, they're called polar bears. Brewer challenges and gets up over the top of Phelan for two. 20 for Brewer. The lead is 16. Krizowitz tips it. Brewer. And Stonington is not even hustling back. They're also not going to foul. This one is, all for all intents and purposes, over. The Wheeler Lions will win the Division II championship. Jay Wozencroft is waving the white flag. He is putting in the bench. And the Lions faithful know their team is about to earn the chip. Jubilation right now for the Wheeler Lions. The product of years and years of playing together. We've talked about it. This group has played together throughout and really have looked towards this year as the year that they needed to get it done. Mostly seniors. They got the one fabulous junior here at the free throw line right here in Brewer. So the subs are gonna come in the game. Let's name them for you. Freshman Cohen Hinchy into the game for Stonington. Freshman Sean Durham into the game for Stonington. Sophomore Aaron Vizlowski into the game. Freshman Braden Wolfrad. One more for Brewer. He knocks it down. 21 for Brewer. He's the leading scorer, but man, I mean, it's gonna be tough. I'm glad I, I'm not consulted on player of the game. It's gonna be tough, because you could say Kessler, you could say Bransford, Zardes was a big factor. I'm a big fan of the Chrisowitz fist pump. So, you know, your guess is good as mine, Casey, who the player of the game's gonna be. Luke Hoagland into the game for Stonington for Wheeler. Into the game, Garrett Lemahan. Into the game, Nate Main. Into the game, Montigny. Into the game, John Anderson. And into the game, Wyatt Elliott. All into the game for Wheeler and Stonington. I, I think as great as Brewer was, as great as all of them were, I think it's Kessler. Bransford would be fine. I think you could name any of them, but I think it's Kessler when they needed some big baskets and he had the ball in his hands all night long. Three is good from Aaron Vislowski. The sophomore knocks down the triple. The nice sneakers. Lemon. Wheeler student section about to erupt. And the award-winning cha you know, championship, award-winning cheerleaders from the Wheeler Lions. Everyone's favorite. Hey, Wheeler High School. The Lions, you are Division II champions of the ECC. Roar, Lions, roar. Years they have been climbing. Years they have been scratching. Years together for this moment. Congratulations, Coach Stephen Bailey. Seniors Kyle Kessler, Keith Zardes, Kyle Montigny, DeAndre Bransford, John Anderson, Sean Burgle, Wyatt Elliott, Jason Krizowitz. You are champions of the ACC. It was a great game. It was a game that went into the fourth quarter and plays had to be made, and Wheeler made those plays to secure the championship. Outstanding season for the Stonington Bears. Their season's not over. They are the number seven seed in the Division Three state tournament. They will get a home game or possibly two. So 
Coach Wozencroft's done a great job with that team. They'll go back to the drawing board and try to make a run in the States. Stonington will not be a, an easy out in the tournament. And here's what, what I'll say about Wheeler. As long as they don't let this win be the win for their year, they can make a run in the state tournament as well. You know, sometimes they've worked so hard for this, you can't come out flat. This team can make a run in the state tournament as well. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you're gonna, there's a lot of teams in the state tournament and only one's gonna finish the season with the win. I, I still love the conference tournament. I still think it's a big part of defining your season and it, it's a momentous achievement. So, you know, I put it up there with, you know, in, in order to have a, an achievement better than a conference tournament championship, I think you gotta make the semis in the States, you know? You say, would you rather win a conference championship or make the quarters? I'd rather win a conference championship. I would agree. you rather win a conference championship or make the semis? And now you're in the debate, right? I'd rather, you know? do, I'd rather do both. <laughs> Scavello and Lepresto, all tournament. Kyle Kessler, limping, all tournament. DeAndre Bransford, all tournament. And the most outstanding player for the Division II ECC tournament, junior Zane Brewer. The versatile junior, 6'2", can shoot the three, can drive to the basket, floater game, jump shot, strong rebounder. He did it all for the Wheeler Lions tonight. There's your all tournament team for Division II. Three Lions, two Bears. Soon they'll take their picture in front of their championship banner. They're waiting for it. The presentation of the plaque to Coach Stephen Bailey. Scott Elliott, Lyman Memorial Athletic Director, will present the trophy. Coach Bailey, such a good guy from the Jeff Bernardi coaching tree. So proud, and that says it all. Yeah. Embrace with uh, A.D. Elliott. Coach Bailey was the head coach at Lyman before taking the job at Wheeler. Before that, he was an assistant at East Lyme. So he's paid his dues as a coach. He's now coaching at the school he teaches at, which is a a tremendous asset to both the school and community when you have your uh, teachers also coaching, uh, just embedded into the fabric of what North Stonington is doing. Great win for Wheeler tonight. We'll be taking a break in a moment, and then we'll come back with the sports doctor. He'll have the interview with head coach Stephen Bailey, brought to you by the law offices of Dan Horgan as well as an interview with our player of the game, the Wheeler Lions, and Coach Stephen Bailey are your Division II champions. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with the interviews on the other side. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. I came here in 1992 not knowing a soul, and I started a law practice in New London. The community has supported us ever since. Thank you. Game day athletes, playing high school sports is going to be one of the best experiences of your life. I know you give 100% effort and you treat your teammates, your opponents, and your coaches and officials with respect. Are you doing the same in school? Are you showing up every day and giving 100% effort? Are you giving the respect to your classmates, your teachers, and your parents? Sure, winning is great and give it your best today when you go out on that field. But never forget, getting a good education will be the best game you'll ever play in your life. Who better?
to interview Coach Stephen Bailey and the champion Wheeler Lions, then our own proud alumni, the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. Congratulations. What a happy group of Wheeler Lions here, Coach. I mean, you took this job two years ago, you know what, and you brought them to the promised land tonight. How good does this feel right now? It feels great. These guys have worked, you know, young sophomores. I took them on last year. They believed in me. I believed in them. It's a credit to them these last two years. Without this team, we wouldn't be here. It's a great group of guys. They come in every single day and work. They believe in what we do, and they play Wheeler Lions basketball. We just talked about that we're in this game, right? We need to settle down. We need to value the possessions in the third, in the fourth, moving through. We just need to run our stuff. Every single person on the floor is a viable threat. We need to trust each other. We need to get stops, rebound, and do what we do and execute. And as good as this one feels, I got a feeling you're not done yet. Job ain't finished. Job finished. We could choose anybody for our player of a game tonight. Everybody played well, but it just seemed like in that third quarter, Kyle Pressler, yes, you had the ball in your hands and you wanted to score the basketball, son. How did it feel out there? Oh, it felt great. You know, some shots felt better than others, but I'm just happy to score some points, get my teammates some points, and it just feels good to win. You know, what's the difference in a game like this versus Stonington? They're good. Their guard plays good. What's the difference to separate these two teams? I think we just play better, like, fundamental basketball. Like, they're good. They, they take shots. I just think we play better as a team because we've been playing since middle school at, together. So I just think we play better as a team than they do. You guys barely subbed either. Yeah. You get tired out there, any of you guys? Not really. He conditioned us before the season starts, <laughs> so it kind of sticks out the whole season. Oh, I said it all along. You guys are kids. You should never get tired. But what a great job tonight. The whole bunch, the Wheeler Lions at the Mohegan Sun, guys. What a great game. Casey? Thank you, sports doctor. Congratulations, Coach Stephen Bailey and all the Wheeler Lions. We're about a half an hour away. We're about a half an hour away from the Division I championship game. Let's recap this one. Take a look. We said anybody could have been a player of the game. You know, Zardes, Bransford, everybody had huge moments. Bransford in particular running the floor, playing like a foot taller than what he is, right? Brewer. All kinds of creative ways of scoring. So many people could have been the player of the game for Wheeler. And on the other end, you know, Coach Scavello, Lepresto, they just never went away. Stonington just kept fighting, but Wheeler, just too much, too veteran, too savvy, and they're champs. They played a clean third quarter. They came out of the locker room, and as Coach Bailey said, they needed to take care of the basketball. No turnovers in the third quarter really seized control of that game in the third quarter and then made the championship hustle plays down the stretch, big shots in the fourth quarter, hustle plays for 50-50 balls, big rebounds, uh, closed it out. Stonington just couldn't get enough shots to fall to, to earn that comeback, but they kept fighting and I think they'll have some fight in them left in the Division Three state tournament. It's not gonna be easy. Division Three's got some teams, including the Fitch Falcons, uh, who we'll be seeing up next. Krizowitz, everybody's favorite energy guy, running the floor, the fist pump. Brewer, the scorer, the junior. This Wheeler team has a lot to like, and a huge community rallying behind them. I think 90% of the school showed up for this one. And at the end, catharsis for Wheeler. They are the Division II champions of the ECC. We're about 25 minutes away from the Division I championship game between the Fitch Falcons and the St. Bernard Saints trying to defend their Division I crown. Congratulations to the Wheeler Lions. We'll be back in about 25 minutes with your D1 final. Keep watching game day live on day.com.
St. Bernard. No ECC team has beaten the Saints in two years, 29 games. They are the defending ECC and state champions and appear to be gelling at exactly the right time. Mark Jones has been patiently waiting for the performance he saw in the semifinal win over Waterford, where the Saints looked versatile, hungry, and most importantly, invested in each other. Amir Gray is leading. Amari Marshall is back. Kurt Marshall is thriving. And the Saints seem to have found the right roles for a deep roster of players. Fitch is puzzling at times, but the number three seeded Falcons showed in their rubber match win over rival New London why they are perhaps the most feared team in the league. J.J. Robinson and Xavier Good are a dream backcourt, and Jacob Francis gave the Whalers nightmares in his most dominant performance of the season. Calvin Sebastian and Sakis Reels made huge shots, and the Falcons are on the hunt for a title. Coach Charles Savan has gotten them to the sun. They just need to do what no one else has done in two years. Beat the Saints. The ECC Division I Boys Championship is on the line as the Saints and Falcons go to work with star power on display. The sun will be as bright as ever, and all the action will be live on game day on the day.com. Live from Mohegan Sun Arena, it's the Division I ECC Boys Championship basketball game between the number three seeded Fitch Falcons and the defending champion number one seed. Nobody's beat them in two years, St. Bernard Saints. And all the action is live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that's good begins with a smile, and at Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized dental care you deserve, so contact them today at waterforddentalhealth.com. The ECC Boys Basketball Finals are brought to you by Phillies. At Phillies, we bring the taste of Philadelphia to you. No shortcuts. We only source authentic products such as Steakhouse Ribeye and Philadelphia Big Demoroso Rolls. So come on through where everyone is family at Phillies. Casey O'Neill, along with the coach, Chris Juicy, and I'll tell you, I could really, I could go for a nice Philly cheesesteak right now, but we saw Wheeler put on a performance. Now the star power elevates a little bit more. Talk a little bit about this one. Well, we got the juggernaut going here in the St. Bernard Saints against one of the hottest teams in the league, the Fitch Falcons. Fitch with an outstanding performance on Saturday against the New London Whalers, really performed well uh, in the clutch. Their stars stepped up and their bench stepped up, and they're gonna need a full team effort to overcome this Saint machine. 29 straight now, Casey. Uh, ECC victories for the St. Bernard Saints. Mark Jones has got them rolling. St. Bernard won both regular season meetings with the Falcons. They're trying to get a three-peat. Well, Wheeler won the first game. That made the sports doctor very happy. He's down on the sidelines. Let's see if he's, you know, already champagned in, or is he ready to stick around for this one? Sports doctor. This trip to the Saints. They come in here, they're very familiar with this arena, whether they're on a state level, level or a league level, so they know what to expect. Coach Charlie Silvan says, my guys are ready to roll. We played a great game against Saturday. We're gonna kind of ride that high running into today. This should be a great game, and in my opinion, it's gonna come on a guard play. We'll determine who wins this game tonight. Thank you, Sports Doctor. You know, we talked a little bit uh, off camera earlier about uh, the Fitch Falcons being a team that nobody wants to play because of that backcourt, J.J. Robinson and uh, Xavier Good. You know, Francis has turned his game up a notch in the semifinal win over Waterford. But on the other side of things, it just feels to me like Mark Jones has figured out what he wants this team and what their role is to be. Uh, I think we could be seeing the beginning of a real run from the Saints. Yeah, I think you're gonna find out really quick how competitive of a game this is gonna be. St. Bernard came out from the jump against Waterford and was in the shorts of the Waterford Lancer guards. They really stunted any offensive movement that Waterford uh, could try. If they play like that right from the start, it's gonna be a long night for the Falcons. 
Let's go to PA announcer Bill Glenny. Before we meet tonight's starting lineup, I'd like to bring your address to attention to the big board as we meet tonight's players in tonight's game, brought to you by Game Day and The Day. Justin Allo, Oakley Garrison, Tyler Manguel, Nate Little, Darren Anthony Robinson III, Reverend Gonzalez, Troma Kelvin Jr., Tyson Manguel, Amari Marshall, Savion Melendez, JJ Robinson, Calvin Makai Sebastian, Xavier Good, Xander Turman, Jacob Francis, Malachi Shad, Keith Go, Keith Rills, Nick Wagner, Wes Lodge Nathan Virtue. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet tonight's contenders. First, we begin with the number three seed in Fitch. Upset wins over Eastline in New London propelled them to a trip to the sun. Wearing their red jerseys, currently 15 and six on the year. They are led by head coach Charles Sylvan. Put your hands together, Falcon fans. Let's meet your starting five. Starting at guard, a six-foot sophomore, number one, J.J. Robinson. At guard, a six-foot-two junior, number two, Makai Sebastian. At guard, a six-foot-one sophomore, number three, Xavier Good. At forward, a six foot five senior, number 11, Jacob Francis. And starting at guard, a six foot two junior, number 12, Malachi Sa. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this leads us to the number one seed in St. Bernard's. Wins over Woodstock and Waterford, punch their ticket to Mohegan. Currently 19 and three on the season, wearing their white jerseys with red trim. They are led by head coach Mark Jones. Make some noise, Saints faithful. Let's meet your starting five. At guard, a six foot sophomore, number three, Ty Grudzin. Guard, a six foot junior, number four, Amir Gray. Starting at forward, a six foot five freshman, number 10, Curtis Marshall. At forward, a six foot four junior, number 14, Tyler Manqual. And starting at forward, a six foot six freshman, number 22, Troy McKelvin Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, your officials tonight, Mr. Dave Cruz, Mr. Tim Vanaris, and Mr. Merrick Drabinski. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Tonight's anthem is being performed by the Legend High School Chamber Choir under the direction of Miss Melanie Cometa.
Thank you to Shem Adams for the Philly cheese stick. Courtesy of Phillies. They're the sponsors of tonight's game, and I think we're gonna try to get this thing done uh, maybe before halftime of the first one. So thank you to Phillies. That's what it looks like right there. All right, you know what I want with my cheese steak? I want some freshly squeezed juice. Coach, what do you got? Casey for St. Bernard, jump start. The Saints came out energized on Saturday versus Waterford and took the Lancers out of the game early. They need to continue that energy and not let Fitch gain confidence early on. Lock them up. Fitch has two great scores in Robinson and Good. You can't let them beat you. Force others to take shots. And one and done. The Falcons are scrappy on the offensive glass. Box out well and limit him to one shot. For Fitch, outstanding lead rolls when the lights are on. You watch your stars, Robinson and Good, need to be on their A game. Top supporting cast. The other guys were phenomenal on Saturday versus New London. Francis, Sebastian, Zimmerman, and Keels all made big plays. They need to do the same tonight. And best shooting. Going to have to shoot well. Make some threes tonight to win this game. Francis wins the tip. Here's J.J. Robinson, grudgeons on him. And the Saints go man to man. Start it off. Grudgeon gets Robinson. Good straightaway three, no good. McKelvin and it's the Saints are trapped. Francis and Robinson, and they forced McKelvin to travel. So you know that's going to be the name of the game today for Fitch, right? They want this thing chaotic. I like how Fitch starts the game with some weave action, just trying to create some confusion. Whatever you can do to get it an advantage and get St. Bernard out of their traditional man defense. And there's the Saints jumping good. Dumped down to Francis. Nothing there, good defense from the Saints. Amir Gray, the ECC player of the year. Falcons matching up. Grudgeon for three. Good. Three ball. Starts us off for the Saints. Yeah, I don't think Fitch had all their matchups. They were pointing and lost in transition. We've seen that one before. Saab floats it high. No good. And Francis tips it, pins it. Jump ball favors the Saints. A good attack of the rim that time by... Saab, he was not able to play in Saturday's game, so big boost for the Falcons to have him back on the court tonight. Well, the last time these two teams played, there was no Amari Marshall, there was no Jacob Francis. So long three from Amir Gray is no good. There's Francis with the rebound. So there's gonna be a new cast of characters in some respects that both teams are fully healthy for the first time in a long time. Grudgeon. Hounds Robinson, Sebastian underneath. Let's talk a little bit about this change. I mentioned in the open, the Saints have gone to a new starting lineup over the past three weeks. We saw them, had them on game day, lost to East Catholic, but East Catholic, and were kind of flat. And the one thing that came out of that game was the defensive work of Ty Grudgeon against Samson Riley. Since then, Grudgeon has worked his way into the starting lineup, and it has made this Saints defense five deep five defenders. Talk a little bit about what that does, uh, the impact that for the Saints. Well, that's the, first of all, that's the Coach Jones DNA. You know, he he himself as a player was built on defense. He he was capable of scoring 30 a game, but he, he prided himself on the defensive end. That's what got him his Division I scholarship. So he wants all five guys to be able to play physical man-to-man, -man, and that's what Grudzian offers. Francis up and under the reverse. Gets the pitch on the board. Good start for the Falcons. They're in the 1-2-2 two, two half court trap now. Tipped and out of bounds. It'll stay here with the Saints. I mean, what teams in the ECC does Amari Marshall, Nas Rembert, and Colin O'Leary not start for? St. Bernard. That's it? That's I mean, it. That's a remarkable eight-man rotation the Saints are locked into now. They've got everything. Defense coming off the bench, scoring coming off the bench. They've got size, length, 
I can't say enough, 29 straight is a remarkable feat. Two years without a loss in the ECC. Pitch switching to the 2-3 zone now. Gray, open three, no good. Look at Mangual crash the board and finish. So three three-point shots so far from the Saints, but a big offensive rebound from Mangual. Saab tried to zip it to Sebastian out of bounds. It'll stay with the Falcons. One of the things that you'll see all night is how good St. Bernard is as, at defending ball screens. So I, I don't know how long Fitch is going to go with that, but it would be in their best interest to not use as many because St. Bernard is really good at jumping them and creating turnovers. Good. Crosses over, drives on Mangual, left hand no good. I think McKelvin got a piece of it. Second shot no good. Gray pushes the other direction for the Saints. Good sign that he was able to get to the basket though. Gray, jump stop, body shield, backboard, and the Falcons want a timeout. They're down five here early. And, and that's what happens when you don't convert, unfortunately. Like, Fitch has gotten good shots. But if they're not gonna get those shots to fall, it's hard to keep St. Bernard from scoring all game long. You're gonna have to outscore St. Bernard. That um, was a little Tokyo drift yeah. by Amir Gray right there. I, you know, St. Bernard's we'll talk lots about. Fitch is such, so dangerous. You know, you've got J.J. Robbins and Xavier Good. That's why we talked about Division Three in the state tournament. There are going to be teams that go, how is this team? In Division Three, and, and how are they 15 <laughs> and 6? Yeah, yeah. Because their guards are going to overwhelm some teams. Mm -hmm. And Jacob Francis is playing his best basketball. Malachi Saab is, can, can show flashes of true brilliance. And Calvin Sebastian is a the absolute kind of glue guy. When you bring in a guy like Sakis Reels, who knocks down threes, and Nate Virtue with a big body, like all, and Xander Timmerman. You know, Fitch is pretty deep too. Sebastian blocked by McKelvin into the hands of Grudgeon. Marshall blocked by Francis. Mangual kicks out to Gray. Good hands from Good. Difference right now has been Saints' ability to get offensive rebounds, Fitch. One and done. We talked about Francis is going to have his work cut out for him with so many. Saints coming at him. And if that's going to happen, Ty Mangual knocking down a three. The Saints take on another dimension. It just becomes scary. Deep. Way downtown bang. Turnover. McKelvin ahead. Marshall. Blocked by Good, but a foul. Oh. But Zay Good went up mano a mano with Kurt Marshall. And the body contact is going to get the foul. But look at the little guard go up and get it. Yeah, actually, it's, it's unfortunate for both teams. Unfortunate that you got to foul on one of your star players and Good. But also unfortunate for St. Bernard because Manguel was right there for the foul layup. By the way, you know, you got a nine-point lead. Let's bring in Amari Marshall off the bench. But you see, preceding that breakout by Curtis Marshall was another ball screen that St. Bernard was, a lot, was able to turn Fitch over on. The ball screen, high ball screen, is just not going to work against the St. defense. Good crossover. Robinson, strong to the basket. He'll draw the foul. He'll go and he'll shoot too. Well, right there, they, they got St. Bernard sleeping because JJ's able to reject the screen. So when you're playing ball screen defense, you actually want the ball handler to use the screen because it forces them right into your help. Uh, if JJ's able to, or, or any of the guards are able to reject the screen, it leaves you an open drive lane. That's what happened a little bit in their second matchup, which we had on the day back at Fitch. I think the Saints are really poised to make a run in the Division I tournament. The road won't be easy, but they are not going to be an easy out. Both of these teams could be back here in a couple weeks. Marshall 
Gives it up, Mangual. Swings it. Now Grudgeon drives. That's going to be short, and Francis gets it to good. Oh, look at the pressure. Double team, turnover. Kurt Marshall with the right hand. Giving Fitch a taste of its own medicine. Trapping and double teaming the ball handler. Marshall up high for the rebound. Outlet to Gray. We're going to get a foul on Sebastian. Yeah, I, I liked what Fitch did on the first possession with the weave action. You just, you just don't want to bring more help as you see the reach here by Sebastian. You know, we, sometimes teams come in here playing with house money. Sometimes teams come in here and the bright lights, you know, are a little bright. You know, St. Bernard's has been here. They've played here, I think, as you know, more times than almost anybody over the past few years. This is not new to them. This is very new to Fitch. This has been the mountain they've been trying to climb. And right now, they look like they're in second gear. St. Bernard's looks like they're in first gear. Actually, St. Bernard's looks like they just hit turbo. <laughs> substitutions for the Falcons, maybe to energize them. Yep, Sakis so Reels, Nate Virtue into the game. Gray, harassed by Robinson. Marshall kicks it out to Grudgen for three, short. And Reels goes up high. Marshall strips him. Gray, Redbird into the game. NBA three, no good. And Francis rips it down. Up ahead, Virtue running the floor. Easy basket for the Falcons, Nate Virtue. Uh, that was just St. Bernard just kind of taking some deep shots. Deep shots lead to long rebounds. Virtue with the steal. Good. Blows by Rembert. Hangs in the air and draws the foul on Kurt Marshall. And this guy, you can't let him get going. He can score a lot in a hurry. Leading, third leading scorer in the state at 25 a game. We saw Nas Rembert come in and shoot that long three. That foul is gonna be the second on Marshall. And that's what Rembert's role on this team is now. Vinny, Vinny Johnson, the microwave. He's gonna come in, he's gonna shoot threes, see if he can get some instant offense lit up for the, you know, for the Saints. Other side of things. Right now, Fitch just needs to settle, chip away a little bit at a time, getting to the line, right? Always a good way of doing that, but then you gotta knock down your free throws. Yeah, I think the coaching staff from St. Bernard is just saying to Nas, it's worth three from 19-9 and also from 30. You can't get four points from shooting it from further away, so just be patient and take it within the rhythm of the offense. The court is littered with young talent. Freshman, sophomore, junior, basket. Marshall, Grudgen, Marshall. Good ball movement from the Saints, unselfish. Good. Being overplayed by Grudgen, goes left, great defense. Shot clock down to 13. Robinson goes by Gray. Pulls up in the lane. No good. Virtue with a hustle rebound. Shot clock still down to five. Robinson floats. No good. Gray to Kurt Marshall. Grudgen with a hustle. Points and a beautiful look to Amir Gray, who finishes. And the Saints with a 12-point lead. Ty Grudzian's having a great first quarter. He's making those hustle plays, those tough plays, and he's also locking in on Xavier Good. Good now, drives baseline, puts his shoulder in, hangs, and Amir Gray is going to draw the foul. I think he got a piece of him with the body, if that's who they call it on. They were both there, and it is on Gray. This looked clean, but let's see if the body's in play. Yeah, got him on the head. A little little uh, hang in the air, was able to contort the basketball a little bit and draw that foul. He's they, a scorer. Yeah, they wouldn't have called that at the Martin Center. 
<laughs> that call would not have been made. And Xavier Good right now, who's, at, you know, an absolutely lights out shooter, having some issues here with the baskets at Mohegan Sun. Depth, we talk about the depth perception of this place definitely plays havoc with first time players. Yeah, and there's also a, a slight bounce to the court that you don't get on high school courts. Out of bounds off of Sebastian. It'll be the Saints ball and an empty trip for the Saints. You're not, you don't see good miss this many free throws. Fitch switching defenses consistently. They're back in the man to man now. Bridgen picked up his dribble. He lost it for a second, but Rembert comes to bail him out. Gray zipped it to Amari Marshall, and the shot clock violation. Great defensive set that time. First quarter comes to an end. 18 to 6. We are going to keep it here with us. as Jim Bunicor will come to center court. It's our guy. At center court, Jim Bunicor awarding our own Peter Wappi. There would be no game day without the talents of that guy right there, Peter Wappi. What a great partnership between the ECC. And he's taking a <laughs> cheesesteak. <laughs> Casey, I never saw you move so quick. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not a violent, I'm a non-violent guy. I mean, I'm, you know, but I'm telling you right now. You wanna, you wanna go after my cheesecake, thank you. You wanna go after my cheesecake, we're gonna throw. We're gonna throw down. <laughs> I'm Phillies just waiting for halftime. Mean time. cheese steak, yeah. Dave Cruz is coming Cruz over. Is he wants some cheese steak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, sports doctor, you were down listening in on what Coach Sylvan had to say. What'd you have to hear? But they're pretty calm. There's no panic mode over there just yet. He just talks about finishing at the rim. They missed a ton of laps and free throws too. So he's, we'll start making some shots. Talked about tightening things up on the defense end a little bit, but Casey, their concern right now is just make some shots and get in the game. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, they've left five points at the free throw line for one. Yeah, two of nine in the first quarter, Fitch was from the field. Not gonna win that way. Gray picks it. Bounce pass to Rempert. What a pretty play, Amir Gray to Nas Rembert. Beautiful. That's the evolution of a point guard now. Amir Gray is becoming a true point guard, not just a scoring guard. Hustle on the floor. Marshall, Robinson. You know, again, I feel like the Saints all year long have been sort of searching for their own identity. You know, that's weird to say that since they're defending state champions. But this is a very different team. Tyson Wheeler, Cedric Similian, even Ryan Outlaw, all very much knew their roles. This year was a little, they were trying to figure it out. And I think Amir Gray has settled in, you just said it, the evolution of a point guard. He has settled in so nicely. He is leading this team. Uh, and it starts on the defensive end. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a different challenge ahead for them. They, they still want to finish the job here in the ECC. Coach Jones isn't taking this for granted, but it's a different task ahead to win Division I. Gray pull up no good. Francis taps it to Reels, and the Falcons are going to push. Here comes Robinson. Good. NBA three. Got it. X marks the spot for good. They needed him to hit that. Marshall from the free throw line buries it. Amari Marshall's hitting that trailer free throw jumper. Man, what? Where, where's the weak point? Colin O'Leary into the game for the Saints. He'll take on the defensive task on good. Sebastian, pretty move, no good. Francis rips it away from McKelvin and scores. Jacob Francis just beasted it. 
Yeah, they need more of that. They need more extra shot opportunities. O'Leary straightaway three, no good. Sebastian chases down the rebound, and Fitch on a little run, feeling a little life here. Good, double teamed. Tough spot. Robinson helps him out, though. O'Leary on good. Good. Hangs, floats, great defense from O'Leary. Francis tracks it down. They're gonna need a shot. Reels for three. Oh, Sakis is so reels. He was clutch on Saturday. He hit the three that put Fitch ahead. And that's a big one from deep, way deep. downtown. Freshman, by the way. Freshman, Sakis reels. Saints aren't the only ones with, with the youngins. Robinson is a sophomore, Good's a sophomore. Gray and it tries to answer with a long three, no good. Sebastian has the rebound. Fitch has cut it to eight. Gonna get Nas Rembert on the reach and a new wave of subs coming in. Mangual, Kurt Marshall, Gudgeon all back into the game, O'Leary. Rembert and McKelvin Jr. will come out. Saab back into the game, giving Sebastian a breather. Six different scores for the Saints so far this game. Good finds Francis at the free throw line. Takes it to the basket and scores. Basket, harm, free throw upcoming for Jacob Francis. So after a two of nine shooting performance in the fourth, in the first quarter, Fitch is four of five this quarter. And lo and behold, it's down to six with a chance to get it down to five. No good. Man, if the Falcons could make free throws, they would be tied in this game right now. Five missed free throws for the Falcons. Mangual, good look. Kurt Marshall finishes with the left hand. Little dribble penetration. Yeah, Fitch has to just be sound on defense and make guys make shots over him. Reels misses the three. Marshall's going to push, and we're going to get a foul at half court. They're going to get. Looks like they're gonna get reels on the reach. A little nickel dimer. That's the loose change. See it right here in the replay. Yeah, he got him. Swat, he tried That's to. That's a great call. The legendary Mayor Trebinski on the call there. High on my list of officials I would not mess with. Oh my gosh. Eat this cheesesteak in two bites. Looks like he would, like his, like <laughs> his hands made of brick. <laughs> Gray, dribble penetration, bounce pass to Mangual. That sometimes basketball can be poetry. How pretty is a bounce pass, right? Amir Gray had second beautiful bounce pass he's made tonight. Robinson stripped by Grudgeon. The Saints have numbers. Grudgeon all the way. Oh, a block by Saab. And then Amari Marshall finishes at the rim. Yeah, Fitch got excited on the beautiful block. St. Bernard didn't give up on the play. Travel as the, the Saints have made a mission on harassing Xavier Good. But this lineup, Casey, is different defensively than when some of the subs are in the game for the Saints. Grudzian is just playing outstanding defense right now on Xavier Good and J.J. Robinson. Gray pulls up, baseline, floater, no. Marshall strips it, goes head on head. No, Gray, finally Robinson, ahead to Good, challenges Amari Marshall. Marshall wins the challenge. 
Nothing easy for the Falcons. I think they got a loose ball foul on the rebounding action. Two team fouls apiece this quarter. Saints have withstood the little Falcon run. It's still 12. Yeah, but it feels like a game. Fitch has some life. Amari Marshall for three, no good. Rebound, ripped down, put back. Mangual. Tyler Mangual has got new life in this lineup as well. Yeah, this is a great defensive lineup. You know, Amari Marshall and Troy McKelvin Jr. are kind of interchangeable defensively, so. But it's the guards, Manquel, Grudzian, and Amir Gray that are really good. Good, can't get it to go. Gray, out ahead of everybody. Draws contact, and he'll shoot two. Those three guards, three, four, and 14, as we see Amir is patented, hanging in the air, drawing the foul. Grudzin, Amir Gray, and Tyler Manquel. Excellent, excellent on-ball defenders. You're gonna need that in Division I. And then you got Kurt, Amari, and Troy McKelvin providing the size inside. Man. I feel like it's the closest the Saints have been to the lineup they want to go into the postseason with. We'll talk at some point about what that road looks like because Division I is a slow, agonizing march. There is nothing easy. Yeah, and it, and it might not even be that slow this year. It's, there's only 17 teams. So uh, you're, gonna, you're looking at four games. That's it, three games to get back to Mohegan Sun. And those three games, wars. Yeah, when, we talk, when we tell you the two teams the Saints are going to have to beat to get to Mohegan Sun, just to get here, you're going to realize that Division I, there's no, no quarter given in Division I. Mm. Lead is 16. They've doubled them up. And the Falcons had it down to six, and just like that, it's 16. Robinson stripped, foul. Mark Jones does not like that one. Yeah, be careful, and Cruz is gonna, Cruz is. Second foul on Gudjian, team's third. Falcons will have it underneath. He'll make a substitution, bring in O'Leary. He's also good. You don't skip a beat with O'Leary defensively either. And this is the lineup we talked about earlier. Marshall, Marshall, Mangual, O'Leary, and Gray. You got four, six, four betters out there. Mm. And Gray, it, it's a very good, and you still got McKelvin if you want. Like, it's, it's a very long lineup. Pull up from the free throw line, and good can't get it to go. Amari Marshall running the floor, and he'll finish ahead of everybody. Saints doing a little bit of everything right now. 12-0 run took a... Six point lead to 18. Timmerman into the game for the Falcons. Great. Reels now. Excuse me, Saab rather. Little pick and roll with Virtue. And the uh, Falcons are a little out of sync right now. Yeah, it's the ball screen. It's just, uh, <laughs> St. Bernard's just so good at defending the ball screen. 43 seconds remaining in the half, a 18-point lead. Amir Gray will take a breather. Nas Rembert back in the game for the Saints. Yep, got caught on his hip. 34 seconds remaining, so if they want to take the last shot, they can. Shot clock is off. Good, double clutched. Look at the outlet pass. 
I love that, though. Amari Marshall's first thought was, let me get this outlet pass going off the hands of his brother. They'll talk about that at dinner later tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's good to outlet it, but uh, I think you want to outlet it to a guard. Give Fitch a chance now. That was now I like that last play by the Falcons. They ran good off a baseline screen. He got a wide open jumper. Running them off off ball screens will free them up a lot easier than on ball screens. Robinson with the rainbow floater and the soft touch. Or just that. Don't use the screen at all. Three, two, Marshall at the buzzer. And what a way to finish the half. Kurt Marshall buries it. And the Saints have doubled up the Falcons 36 to 18 here in the first half. The sports doctor is with Coach Mark Jones, whose team played fabulously in the first half. Sports doctor. Coach, you guys took a 14 to 2 run into the locker room to push the lead up to 18. What was working out there? Oh, uh, we're getting stops. And we're playing hard and we're rebounding the ball. And these guys are pushing it. And when we don't turn the ball over, we're pretty good. They're gonna make a little run of you guys in the second half. What's gonna be talked about? Oh, just keep doing the same thing. You know, they're gonna come out. You know, they're well coached. They're a machine too, so we gotta be ready. Those two guards are really good, and Saab is really good too, so we gotta be ready for everything. All right, good luck in the second half. Casey? Thank you, sports doctor. Well, we're at halftime. The Got It of the Week, brought to you by my guys at CNS Pawn. Chipper, Sock, you gotta go down and tell them you got it, because if you got it, they want it. Let's check out the Got It of the Week. Some of our videos, and we'll be back with second half action on the other side. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Oh no, my shoe's untied! Got it! Do you got it? Yes! Got it! The Got It of the Week was brought to you by CNS Pawn. You got it? They want it. Call my guys, 889-PAWN, located in downtown Norwich. Whatever you got, they want. And just like game day, they got it. A big reason for Fitch's early success this season has been senior big man Jacob Francis. He's growing defensively. Francis with a strong rebound. He's been rebounding very well. Active is Francis. And blocking shots. No good. Francis got a piece of it. So I think he's still finding his niche and how he fits in offensively with this group. Why has this been your best season so far? I feel like I'm a senior. Everybody, like, I've been here since I was a freshman. Everybody like knows me and like they respect me. So like just being a leader. His leadership on the court is a contrast to his quiet personality. The big guy in the, the middle isn't usually soft spoken. No. You are? Yes, I am. Is it hard to be soft spoken off the floor and then be the man on, on it? Yes, it is. Oh, for sure. But I have no choice. I have to use my voice so the guys can like actually hear me and know where to go, like what's going on in the game and stuff like that. People looking at his size and athleticism might expect him to be a certain kind of player. But Francis has developed his game to fit just what his team needs from him. But I think almost everybody has high expectations for me. And how is that hard? Makes me worry I can't get like to their expectation, but I have my own that I set for myself. That can be the trap door, I think, for kids with his length. But I think for what he gives us, it's what we need at this time. Offensive foul, Francis took the charge. He's been outstanding in the first six games defensively. Francis has stood in there a number of times tonight. Um, he's blocked more shots than he has probably in the first six games than he has in his career here so far. Um, he's had I think four double-doubles already. Francis, underneath Sebastian, the Whalers lost him. So he's not scoring at a clip where people might suspect or expect because he's 6'5". And a great rebound by Francis. But he is rebounding and, and having a huge impact on games for us in terms of what he's doing defensively. Francis with the tip. 
27 to 12. Francis and his teammates are out to show that the ECC has more than just two teams to look out for this year. It's like hearing New London and St. Bernard's. Me personally, I don't like hearing that a lot. But like this season with the underdogs, I think we can take it. We can take both teams. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. He was a big part of what we did last year. I mean, he was a big part of that state championship run. And, you know, we wouldn't be state champions without him. He's a big part of what we're doing this year also. He wants me to always go out and guard the best player and just try to get in their head, make them have an off day and do anything we can do to win. Yeah, like he's an irritant, man. Like he's, you know, poking you, doing stuff like that or whatever. And, He's good at it, you know, he's a, he does it in practice, he does it in the game, so why wouldn't we have him guard the best players? And he's athletic, he can move, he can keep guys in front, and like I said, he's competitive. So I think he does a great job in his role, and he's a star in his role. Oh, I feel like I really embrace it because I feel like it means like I'm hard work and I keep, can keep this team together on the court and like keep the energy up and that's just my goal. You know, Doc Rivers always says like be a star in your role and he's a star in his role and that's defensively knocking down open shots and being a leader on this team. Like he's a leader for a reason and there's no way that we win a state championship without Colin. There's no way. Do you think you have to be a star to be no. a leader? No, definitely not. I feel like if I just bring intensity and show the other kids that my willing to win and how hard I, we have to work to win, I feel like that is very important. I'll tell you a quick story. He was starting at the beginning of the season, and I said to him, you know, Colin, we're going to put Tyler back into the starting lineup. I said, all right, coach. Like, he didn't bat an eye or anything. And I was like, okay, I had a big speech and everything prepared for you <laughs> to understand why I was doing what I was doing. But he was like, no, nah, coach, I'm fine. Don't worry about it, I'm good. We're trying to win the state title. If that's what you think's right, let's go with it. You could be a thousand point scorer someplace else or have the career you had here. I'll, I would have to take that ring any day of the week. dive face first into, into food as much as I have. We've got Jim Adams, we got a Phillies, Philly cheesesteak in front of us, our newest sponsor here at game day, responsible for these championships. First of all, thank you so much for this. No you're, problem, you're killing me. I've been smelling it. But talk a little bit about Phillies and then what we can expect in the month of March. Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Michael Jordan's upstairs. They let me cook this uh, upstairs to come down and bring it to you. So I'm gonna give a shout out to them up there. Um, but in the month of March, we're gonna be doing a, a sandwich for Wheeler, and then the winner of this game here. So you come in, and we'll have a special sandwich for both teams, and you're gonna get a good discount on that sandwich. And we're gonna hook it up for y'all. I love it. So we're gonna have championship menu items at Phillies. Yep. So, talk real quick, where can they find information about Phillies? Uh, we are at eatcheesesteak.com. Um, you can find us on philliect.com, uh, philliect on Facebook, uh, Phillies Vermont on Facebook. We're around. I guess so. And now Phillies is all about family, Absolutely. spelled with a PH. Absolutely. I see the Saints are running with the Phillies family on the back as well. Yep. I know there's some outlaw fries on the, uh, on yep, the menu. Yep, yep. He's so, a legend. So come in March, if you're a member, if you're part of the Wheeler community, you want to go to Phillies, yep. you want to get yourself a cheesesteak, you want to say, I want that championship Wheeler item. Yep. The winner of this game can do it as well. Yep. And then we can hook up some videos of them getting those sandwiches and see if we can uh, find out who's going in. And what I'll do is I'll put it on uh, social media and let Wheeler 
pick their sandwich, and then the winner of this game pick whatever sandwich they want. So we'll do from there. That's fabulous. Can't thank you enough for joining the game day family. Thank you for this. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here real quick because I'm gonna eat that. My man. <laughs> before Mike Demoro gets in and eats it. So hey, look. thank you to Shem Adams you and Phillies, our newest sponsor here for the ECC championship games on game day. You good? It was just harassment. Gray got to the basket with a beautiful float. Manguel knocking down a three. A little bit of everything from the Saints, but it started with that harassing defense. Grudgen up ahead to Kurt Marshall, finishing with the right. And coach, I mean, Saints really did put on a defensive and a running the floor hustle clinic in the first half. Yes, and it starts with their man-to-man -man defense. When they come out, with that intense man-to-man -man defense, it really fuels their offense. It's, it's kind of the opposite of most teams. Most teams, when they make shots, they get a little juice to play on defense. They get a little bounce in their step. But the way that Mark has, Coach Jones has built this team is that you gotta play defense. I'm gonna give you freedom on offense. You gotta play defense to earn your right to take a shot. And, and they've really bought into that. They've stymied the two dynamic Fitch guards. And I think Fitch has gotten some good looks, but you know, seven of 18 from the field, two of seven from the free throw line. They're not doing themselves any favors. Whereas St. Bernard's has attempted 11 more shots and have made 15 of 29. Well, Fitch is gonna have to do something here in the second half to get back in it. They're gonna need a second half adjustment. Our second half adjustment is brought to you by Casey Chiropractic. You know, Dr. Casey and his team do such an amazing job. Located in Colchester, Connecticut, you wanna go and check out Casey Chiropractic. They're gonna hook you up with a full body wellness program from head to toe. Things that you never thought chiropractic care could be about, it's beyond that. It's not just your back and your spine, it's head to toe health. Go to Casey Chiropractic and tell him you're at Casey because Casey goes to Casey and Casey said go to Casey. <laughs> So what are the second half adjustments? Let's start with Fitch, because you, you know it doesn't feel like it's 18, mm -hmm. but yet they're down 18. So what do they have to do? Well, it starts with, I think, getting rid of the ball screen, getting rid of the high ball screen. I think J.J. Robinson could go by his man. He, he's that dynamite uh, of a dribbler, of, a, of an attacker. Um, and if he can get to the basket, you know, we talked about it on Saturday. When he goes to the basket, he comes with such an aggression that it almost forces the referee to call something. So then you could get some easy baskets, maybe an and one, maybe some free throws. You get to exhale, and then on the defensive end, they just have to gang rebounds. I mean, they cannot, absolutely cannot let St. Bernard get second chance opportunities. What we've seen St. Bernard's do some of the times when they get these big leads is try for the long threes like they'll, they'll just kind of see you know how deep can I make my three-pointer from tonight and or how many can I make in a row and I think that's really the only way uh, that Fitch is going to get back into this game if if St. Bernard's stops executing takes some quick shots and lets the Falcons get runouts but Fitch has to do their ends of that and get the rebounds so I think really the adjustment for St. Bernard is you know, execute, keep running your stuff, execute, don't let up on defense, but you know, don't get silly on offense. Sports doctor was listening in on the Fitch huddle. What are the Falcons thinking? Well, he's gonna knock down some shots, stick with it and get stops. That's the thing, no second chance scoring opportunities and just play their game and knock down some shots. Guys, another thing too, it's hard to pressure a team like the Saints. So if you know, Fitch decided to go to press him, trap him, I mean, their guard play is so good, they'll eat it up. Falcons have the first possession of the second half. Francis drives and we're gonna get an offensive foul on an illegal screen on Zay Good. So not the way the Falcons wanted to start the second half. Yeah, that was a good looking possession too. It looked like Francis was gonna be able to take his man off the dribble. And I think that's what they gotta look to do a little bit more of without using the ball screen. Just look to take your man off the dribble. Keep moving the ball. If it's not there, don't force it. Mangual loses it. Marshall gets it back, and he's going to get fouled by Francis. And 
wave after wave after wave. I mean, the Saints are playing well. They're hustling to the basketball. It feels like the bounces are going their way, too. Yeah, another second chance opportunity as Casey you, just, uh, it's like finger food. You're blowing up my spot here. They don't know that I'm reaching, into, reaching up <laughs> oh, in the cheesesteak. Um, Mr. DeMauro, Mike DeMauro's laughing, so I, I forget that he's off here. <laughs> One more for Marshall. That one's good. You know, it's, it's tough with a team down 19 points to remember how good Fitch is. You know, right now, and how good St. Bernard's is to make this Fitch team, you know, look less than wonderful. Robinson for three, no good. Great box out from McKelvin. Love that, love that. Don't lose your cool. And aggressive, both teams playing aggressively. Good box out here. Great box out. Let me check that. Great box out by McKelvin. Third foul on Francis. That's one that Francis probably wasn't expecting. He's gotten two in the last 30 seconds. Fitch in the 1-2-2. Two, two. We've seen them use this against other teams with success. Perfect look. Mangual uses the body to bounce off of Francis and scores. 11 for Manguel leads the Saints in scoring. Stripped. Grudgen. Look at the speed demon go. Oh, Ty Grudgen just jetted past everybody. And a timeout as the Saints are marching. Just exceptional. He, like you said, Casey, put it in another gear. And the finger roll off the glass. I mean, they have held a very dynamic Fitch team to 18 points. So let's take this opportunity mm. to talk about. So I think the Saints are playing the best basketball they've played all year. Mm -hmm. I think they found all the answers. But now there's new questions. And the new questions is D1. Let's just stipulate, I'm willing to stipulate that they win at home in their first round matchup. Just because it makes it easier if we skip to the quarterfinals. First round just, just for, for for the uh, right, it's viewers at home, it's Crosby out of Waterbury, who who back you know 15 years ago was a state power, but um, no, not they're, the, they're, they're the same. No, they're no will be. Yeah. So <laughs> they they go they, on the warpath. They go <laughs> into the quarters, and now they have to go on the road. Yes. And they got to travel all the way to Bridgeport to the Cardinal Sheehan Center, where they face Bridgeport. a team who knows a thing or two yep. about winning state championships. Yep. And they can't even claim to be the, the you know, the most Catholics of the schools because they're going up against another Catholic school. Right. Colby Cathedral. Yeah. Now, for those in the ECC, we have a long history with Colby Cathedral. New London knows a thing about Colby. A lot of teams have played Colby over the years. Colby has one of the premier scorers in the state of Connecticut. D1 kid. If they can beat Colby. Uh, Jimmy George. On the road. They go to the semifinals where they'd be facing a neutral site game with Ridgefield. Mm. A team that beat them by 30 points last year. Right. Who they've beaten earlier in the year this year. Right. And if they could win those two games, that's all. They could get to the Sun against maybe Notre Dame or a triple time against East Catholic. Yep. McKelvin for three on the wing, no good, but Kurt Marshall goes over the top for the rebound. Stripped by Robinson, gets it back. No good with the left hand. He was hounded by Gray. Other direction now. McKelvin Jr. And an offensive foul. Calvin Sebastian stood his ground. Beautifully done. Let's take a look. McKelvin went up. Sebastian nicely done. He also went and fell back before he took yeah, too much that, of the contact. Yeah, I don't know about that one, but I will never argue with Merrick Javinsky. Nope. Stripped by Grudgeon. Kurt Marshall ahead of everybody. And the Saints are firing on every cylinder, plus some. The lead is 25. Step back three blocked by Mangual off the side of the rim. And the Saints are relentless. Grudgeon can't get it to go, but McKelvin Jr. gets the rebound. Loses it on the floor to Sebastian. 
And Kurt Marshall is gonna just say, I, I need to foul you right here and slow this thing down. <laughs> Did he need a breather? Just wanted to set up. Virtue into the game, reels into the game. But this foul right here at midcourt by Marshall was just a, I was like, I just need to stop. I need to stop the play for a minute. So looking bleak for the Falcons, but still want to execute here because they really do have a lot to play for. We just talked about um, St. Bernard's path as Reels misses a three. And Francis is going to draw a foul as he went up for the tap. Amari Marshall is going to check in. Bridgen's going to go out. So here's that big Saints lineup again with Marshall, Marshall, McKelvin, and Mangual. Virtue kicks out to Reels. Back to Robinson. Dump down Virtue using the big body. No good. Kurt Marshall with the rebound. Fitch scoreless 0 of 5 from the field to start the half. Block on Virtue. Oh, I thought that one was the charge. So it all balances out in the end. I, don't, I guess he was in the restricted area. So two shots for Kurt Marshall. Now, the Falcons, I mean, if this continues at the rate it's going, it's going to be easy for the Falcons to feel a little humbled. Mm. But they're rolling into D3 oh, they're rolling. where they can really make some noise. Yep. So they're the nine seed. Oh man, do I want to be the one that has to play them in the in the quarters? Yeah, so they're so nine seed, they're gonna play. They're gonna play Wyndham. They're gonna play Wyndham, and though Wyndham's got some talented kids, fit that's a game fit should should win. Yep. And then after that they would play the winner of Seymour and Amity. A game they can win. And then if they win that, they would play the one seed SMSA, which would be a great game. Great game, McKelvin goes up high and scores for the Saints. Francis gets it blocked by McKelvin. Marshall to Marshall, blocked by Francis. Who's the two seed in, in uh, division in division three? Good draws the foul. Lewis shoot Mills. Up. Lewis Best Mills. on the other side of the bracket, though. SMSA 17 and 3. We, we kind of. Well, I'm looking at who would they play? This. Who would they play conceivably if they made a final? Yeah, uh, I don't, will be. I think it would probably. It could, could they be play will be. Will be. It could be will be, but it, you know, it more than likely would be. Could be will be. Could be East Haven. Staven in the, in the Could be Stonington. Stonington's on the other side of the bracket. They're the seventh seed. Lots of action. And you know what? what it, watching Wheeler, watching Turtlelot in the tournament who's playing in D5, I, I think the ECC has a chance to send, you know, more than one team to the, to the Mohegan Sun. Wheeler, tough break, though. Division four. Uh, I don't know how. I... I I'll never understand. Coach Curlin tried to describe the formula to me, and I fell asleep. Marshall kicks out. Gray drives. Amari Marshall, long three, no good. Amir Gray gets tied up with Francis. Possession arrow favors St. Bernard. Yeah, Wheel, you know, Wheeler, 220-some-odd students, and they're in... Division four with the likes of Woodstock Academy. That's a tough one. I did get my Coach Curlin reference in, so my guy Harvey Knowles, class of 1999, always says I got to mention Coach Curlin once a game. He'll, he'll hit me up and bust me for that. Good work. Foul is on Francis. That's his fourth. Marshall will go to the line to shoot two. And Francis is probably going to come out of this one. Timmerman will go in, and the Falcons will go small. How good is this Saints team, Casey? You, you're a historian of ECC basketball. You've been around 
this area for a long time. You know, we talked about the great New London teams in one of our broadcasts that kind of dominated for like a six year stretch. Um, but they called it the Whaler Invitational for a bunch of years, the ECC tournament. But this St. Bernard team is just so methodical in the way they go about just dismantling teams. And now it just seems like you said, they're very focused on a, on a higher level of play. So, there is some perspective to be had here. Gray, ahead of everybody, gets fancy. And the lead is back to 25. Robinson, Marshall, blocking a foul. So let me give you some perspective. The Saints are about to win their 30th straight game in the ECC. If they do that two more times, they still won't equal the New London run that was up over 90 games. Mm. So, I mean, th to put that in perspective, that's, I mean, what St. Bernard, think about this domination, and you gotta do it two more times. Mm -hmm. In addition, New London had two other 30-game streaks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't wanna take anything away from this Saints team, but we've seen this domination from New London. The mm -hmm. only difference is New London never went up and played, because it wasn't like that then. They never went up and played in Division I slash Double L. Now, I can say on, a, on good authority that the New London teams in the 80s when I was there, 89, 90, those teams were the best team in the state. And everyone agreed they were the best team in the state, even though they didn't have to, they never won that. All of our teams that won, won Division II, I don't think anybody necessarily thought they were the best team in the state. St. Bernard's has a chance if they win Division I to make that claim, and that would be something truly special, because no ECC team has won uh, a double L, or in this case, a Division I state championship. Uh, so the Saints would be looking to do something that you know even New London wasn't able to do in all of those years of those runs. Showtime, Curtis Marshall, throw down! And the other thing is that, you know, two starters are freshmen. Yeah, there's not a senior on the floor right now. There's two freshmen, two, two, and three juniors on the floor right now. And in their starting lineup, they, they start a, a sophomore. So this team is built to last. You know, they, they could very well run the table again next year in the ECC. We're going to take a quick break. All Saints here in the Division I final. We'll come back. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. All that is good begins with a smile. At Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Part of our commitment to serving our patients includes providing information that helps them to make more informed decisions about their oral health needs. Our website is a resource we hope you'll find both useful and interesting. Contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com. Cheerleaders cheer. Doesn't matter the score. Doesn't matter the circumstance, cheerleaders cheer. And the Falcon cheerleaders are fantastic. We saw them at the ECC cheerleading championships and they were dynamite. And oh, on the other side, right now it's a good time. I said that the, the kingdom of ECC basketball resides in the castle on the hill. I guess that would mean that that's King Mark Jones they are the princes of the city, that's for sure. I can't wait for the postseason because I think a lot of ECC teams are gonna have success, but I'm fascinated to see how the Saints do in Division I. Gray, McKelvin, he'll go to the line and shoot two. Now, the last time we saw the Saints loss, last time we saw them lose, their last loss, was on game day mm -hmm. against these Catholics, mm -hmm. who subsequently, subsequently lost to Windsor for their first loss in a long time as well. In that game, the Saints did not have Amari Marshall, and they came out flat, something that had plagued them through stretches of that season. They've switched their lineup. The playing flat thing I don't think is an issue anymore. Mm -mm. They also, in that game, looked overmatched by the size of East Catholic. The two bigs of East Catholic were just too big for McKelvin 
and Kurt Marshall. Add Amari Marshall to that mix. And it feels like Mangual is playing differently. Grudgeon came of age in that game. He's different now. I am, I think that this, t this Saints team that, is, that we're seeing here, I would love to see matchup three with East Catholic because I think they can go toe to toe with them. Um, Notre Dame of West Haven's a different animal because when you've got a, you know, a Kentucky type player, Abdu Toure, who is as an electric a player as we're gonna see when you have somebody like that, that's a little different. I'd love to see that matchup. I'd love to see, you know, anything the Saints could get to Mohegan Sun in that final would be fabulous. But this Saints team is deeper and better than it has been at any point this year. Absolutely, couldn't say it any better. And the evolution of their defense is really the key to that. And there's again, Mangual playing his best basketball of the year. There goes Robinson, steal by O'Leary. Gray, pushing. Left hand and finish. Amir Gray calmly scores at the basket and gets a bump, no call. Crowd announced at 4,034. What a nice crowd we've had here tonight in our ECC championship games. McKelvin was stripped by Robinson, but it'll stay here. That's a nice crowd. And, you know, 30 point, I mean, 30 points against a team that New London and, and, and Fitch were hand in hand. And St. Bernard's has beaten this team by 30. It's a remarkable effort tonight. It's a Saints. different team, like you said, yeah. Casey. That, it, it's as simple as that. If you look back at the regular season and look at the scores, you're like, wait, what? It's just a different team. They're playing with a different energy. They have better chemistry. And it starts on the defensive end. Good to Ben Perry, no good. Mangual will run. This is gonna be a track meet for the remainder of this one. Mangual high up at the rim to lead all scores. Like good. they're challenging every shot. Every shot they're uh, challenging. Gray's gonna try to throw it down. Oh, he's tired, he misses the bunny. He throws him down in warm up. So look at his teammates, they're going, you blew it. You blew the bunny, you blew the dunk. Coach Jones not happy. But back to my point about the defense, they're still, it's like, I guess the, the only thing I can think of is like the great defensive teams in football that, you know, they can't wait to get on the field and, and just sack the quarterback. Like, it seems like the Saints have more fun playing defense than they do on offense, if that's possible. Look at this still, this high show on a ball screen still in a 30-point game. Sebastian steps in and knocks it down. And, you know, he's only a junior, and he's playing very well for them. He's found his niche here. Mangual blocked by Francis. It'll stay here with St. Brennan. It's a high hedge on a ball screen on the, on the first possession of the game. To teach your kids to do that that well for one possession takes hours and hours of practice. They continually do that throughout the game. It's demoralizing for offenses that like to run those ball screens to get their shooters some penetration to the basket. Mangual kicks to Gray. 17 seconds, the Saints can have the last shot with a 29-point lead. Gray crosses over. Jump, pump, scoop, two. And that'll take us to the end of the third period. A 31-point lead for the St. Bernard Saints. Nothing more to say. Fourth quarter's on the other side. The Saints are eight minutes away from a championship. You're watching Game Day, live on the day.com. Here at Game Day, we're proud to bring you unrivaled video coverage of local high school sports, all of it free for you to watch. These videos are not free for us to produce them. If you'd like to ensure that we can keep covering your school and your teams, there's a few ways that you can support us. Go over to patreon.com slash the day and sign up to make a small recurring contribution. Think of it as a tip to the game day crew for what they do. Want to show your support in a more visible way? 
hit up our merch store and pick up some game day gear in your school colors. Our camera operators are always looking for those shirts and hoodies in the crowd, and you may see yourself on our next live stream. We get a lot of support from businesses in our community. And if you'd like to join them as a sponsor, send us a message and we can connect you with our advertising staff. Finally, the day is the organization behind everything we do here at Game Day. If you want to support the day's community journalism, consider a print or digital subscription at theday.com slash subscribe. Fourth quarter about to start. And it's been all St. Bernard's here in the Division I final. They have a 31-point lead. The sports doctor was over standing. Sports doctor, what are you hearing? Jones said, keep getting better. So we're up by 31. Let's work on some stuff. There's a shot clock. Let's use it, but let's just keep getting better every possession. It'll pay off in the state tournament, he said. Well, I don't know how much longer we're going to see them working with this group. I have a feeling this is going to be some JV time here in about five minutes. Yeah, they'll let, he'll let them play at least half of the quarter. Grudgen, straightaway three, no good. Tipped. Reels comes out with it for Fitch, and a tip by Grudgen out of bounds. Stays here with the Falcons. Yeah, the Saints have really been disciplined on offense for the most part in this second half and haven't taken wild shots to allow Fitch runouts. Fitch has had to earn every single shot attempt, let alone basket. Francis gets it underneath and he can't finish. McKelvin comes out of the pack with it ahead to Gridgen. Marshall, spot up three, short. We got a official's timeout. Robinson got hit playing defense, bodying McKelvin, inadvertent. Merrick checking on him. Robinson, crossover, good hands from Goodgen. McKelvin has it, tie up with Francis, possession arrow will keep it with the Saints. So we talked about, Casey, the historic place that this St. Bernard team might have. What about the job that Coach Jones has done with this team, bringing a, a program that was nearly defunct and a doormat in the ECC, slowly building them up to a Division II power. I'm talking about ECC Division II, where, where their main rival was Plainfield for many years. A win over Plainfield was a big win. I remember those nights. And now, they're the class of all the ECC. JJ continues to attack the glass and get two. What, what, about, what do you think when you know, when you look back at the historic coaching jobs that ECC coaches have done, where does Mark Jones stack up? You know, it's a great question. Uh, and, and somewhere, my father is listening and praying I don't act like he says, you know, basketball was played before 1980. Yeah. I, I, I think back, and I have to say this, Craig Parker won five state championships in 500 games. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. You can say whatever you want about who's a good coach, who's not a good coach. The only thing I can measure how good a coach you are in is wins, state championships, ECC championships, longevity. They called it the Whaler Invitation under his watch. Five state championships under his watch. Number one team in New England under his watch. Uh, he's got to be the first person that comes to mind. Now, his predecessor at New London, Ralph Ruggiero, won multiple state championships as well. The longevity wasn't there because Ralph left a little bit before. If Mark Jones wins another state championship, especially if he goes up and wins Division I, and he's got to be in the conversation, but I, I would kind of say it's, it's kind of like the people that want Patrick Mahomes to be better than Brady. Mm -hmm. Well, do it two more times, like two more cycles, and you get to Brady. But, like, Mahomes might be, the eye test might say he's the best guy in ever, but, you know, Brady's won it 
seven times in, in over 20 years. I, I think that's kind of where Mark is. You got to look at guys like Bill Bassett, who have won two state championships at Waterford. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think St. Bernard's was defunct. Waterford was defunct when they were playing basketball. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember the Waterford teams, they were, the, they were not good teams, and now Waterford is a staple in the ECC. Uh, and there's going to be a number of guys who uh, are great coaches that may not have won state championships, you know, that we have to name as well as far as guys who were great. Um, you know, I know that in your heart, Neil Curlin's one of the great coaches. You know, you, don't me you can't measure him in state championships the way you can measure some of these other people. So, for me, you know, it started with Mike Pinella, went to Ralph Ruggiero, went to Chop Parker. Uh, Bill Bassett and Waterford jumps out with the multiple state championships. Other guys have won state championships, and certainly I'll get floods of texts and, and messages that I forgot, guys. Mm -hmm. But Mark's in the conversation for, he's going to have to have the longevity piece of it, but he's in the conversation for a guy that's just done remarkable things. Yeah, and I guess where, where I would contend, and I, I've only been around for the last 25 years of ECC basketball, where I would contend is what he's built. And, and that is just as important as how you coach the 32 minutes, right? What you build, the culture you build, the, the, the amount of pride that a school has in its athletic program because of you know, the efforts that you're making, I think that is, you know, before Chop Parker took the New London job, it was dripping with history and tradition. You know, uh, Coach Greg Watts won a state title for Waterford before Bill Bassett got there. Um, now, St. Bernard's did have a rich history in the 80s, but it, it died out. And like I said, it, it was about to go underground. We, you know, maybe even the co-op route um, until Mark got there. And it's, his first couple years were tough. I mean, he, he had some, he had losing seasons. And now it just, you know, I just think we take it for granted. You know, like maybe you, you look back through an, an anthology or, or a history book, you say, oh, you know, Rich Paliuka, you know. They had the, these great teams, Rourke, Bassetto, Flowers. St. Bernard's had this great history of gonna players. I'll tell you right now, Mike Bassetto is going to be livid. You mentioned him second in that, in the, amongst those three guys. <laughs> well, I, well, I teach with Coach Rourke, so I had to. Yeah, but I'm telling you right now, Mike's going to go, what, what, what is Juice doing mentioning I mean, me second? I'm I mean, just saying. I'm sorry. I, had, I still teach with Rourke. <laughs> he, still, he still references the slippery eel. Three from O'Leary, and the lead is 34. Oakley, but Oakley but anyway. Garrison, love that kid in the game. But anyways, it's, it's a conversation that's fun to talk about as now the three-point barrage has entered the Mohegan Sun. So I'm going to say this to those of you out there watching and listening. Who's the greatest coach in the ECC that you ever saw or heard about or consider? And throw a comment up on our broadcast or go on our social media's Game Day CT and give us a comment who the best coach your mind is in the ECC. I love the answers. And we should, of course, mention that we are talking on the boys' side of things because, as the little birdie in my ear reminds me, Bill Scarlotta would have something to say about it if we were including the girls' coaches as well, as your NFA Wildcats know a thing or two about winning on the girls' side. Yeah, only three coaches in the history of the school. Paul, Paul Giardi, Bill Scarlotta, and now Courtney Gomez. Scarlotta with seven state chips. So, if we were going to say, uh, we, we were talking boys side because this is the boys championship, so we'll stipulate Bill Scarlotta and his seven championships on the girls side and say on the boys side of things, who's the greatest coach that you can name? And what's important to you as fans? Is it what your eyes tell you? Is what the, the annals of history tell you? Is it state championships, division championships? What is it that makes a great coach and, you know, Will, uh, I think the, the front runners for the you know best coach, Mark Jones is a returning coach of the year. Uh, earlier today, you know Wheeler, uh, and they won with Coach Bailey, coach of the year. You know, there's a lot that goes into being a great coach. We've got a lot of them in the ECC. I'd love to hear the comments. Three minutes away, we got some subs in the game. Always fun when the subs come out. 
Gian Kopolis knocks it down for the Falcons. St. Bernard's girls were in action tonight. They got a win. 40 to 36 over East Granby, so they advance. Last night, Norwich Free Academy advances past Manchester. They'll play the number two seed in double L St. Joe's Thursday. New London girls had a bye. They wait, await the winner of Mercy Staples. They'll play on Thursday at Conway. And if they win that game, Fitch girls were also in action tonight. They played, they hosted Bristol Central at home. Woodstock girls had a bye. Ledyard girls, we saw them in action last Tuesday night. They lost to New London, but they blitzed Bassett last night, 57-23. They'll play either Northwest Catholic or Weston on Friday. Some subs into the ball game. Jamel Stone, a freshman. Keith Go into the game, and Wes Longino into the game. Shem Adams with the three for the Saints. Oakley Garrison, Jonah Eddy into the game. Brevin Gonzalez. as we're down under two minutes. In Class M, Casey, Plainfield girls fell to Seymour last night. Montville lost to uh, Adam Killingworth. Woodland upset Stonington, so we won't get that rematch of stonington Wyndham, the ECC girls division two final. It would have been a second round matchup. Instead, Wyndham will host Woodlands on Thursday. Garrison comes out ahead of everybody. And Oakley Garrison, the senior, scores a basket here in the ECC Finals. Luke Wenger in the game for Fitch as well. Long three from Jamel Stone. And these Falcons will be back next year. They're gonna have to figure out how to replace some size in Jacob Francis, but they're pretty much all back. Francis and Virtue are gone, so they're gonna have to figure that out, but same, you know, same tune next year. I think the future's bright for Fitch basketball with the two young guards, and I hear that the middle school program is very good, but their season's far from over, as we already alluded to. The state tournament, Division Three, is well within their reach. And they could be back here. They're gonna have to flush this, lick the wounds a little bit. They were hoping for a better performance, I'm sure. But they still have a lot ahead of them. So uh, I will say that uh, my man, Matt Rollins, who is uncle to the Marshals, said, Ralph Ruggiero is the GOAT. And I think there's a lot of people who will, who will say that about Ralph. I just, like I said, it's just about longevity. He just mm. wasn't there as long. But you're not gonna hear me argue. I thought Ralph was spectacular. You're not gonna hear me argue that. Down under 30 seconds. If you were wondering what's next for game day, We'll be doing the Unified Basketball Tournament on March 5th, one of my favorite events. And then hopefully we'll have some postseason uh, games for you here. We'll see what happens. Yeah, looking forward to that Unified event. Always a fun broadcast for us. 10 seconds remain here. The St. Bernard Saints are about to win their second consecutive ECC Division I championship. Their 30th consecutive ECC win, Mark Jones and the St. Bernard Saints are the champions of the ECC Division I. And the band plays on. The St. Bernard Saints will march into the Division I basketball tournament. Much different celebration than the first game. But the Saints have bigger goals this year as Division One 
is something that they set their sights on and they are clicking on all cylinders right now. They have a great chance to do it. For senior Jonah Eddy, Colin O'Leary, Justin Outlaw, Oakley Garrison, your final ECC game of the, for the St. Bernard Saints and they will go out as champions. On the other side for the Fitch Falcons, they're gonna say goodbye after the season to Ben Perry, Xander Timmerman, Jacob Francis, and Nate Virtue. So this was their last ECC game. The Saints will get their trophy. We'll have our all-tournament team. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for the interview with Coach Mark Jones, brought to you by the law offices of Dan Horgan. You're gonna to wanna to hear about the all-tournament team and the most outstanding player. We'll have interviews with all of them as well. But for right now, the team's heading off. And a happy group of Saints. Happy crowd of Saints. Hard to figure who the player of the game is in this one because so many players played well. I, I think Ty Gridgen is as good an answer as anybody for me. Here's the all ECC team with Bill Glenny. Xavier Good from Fitch. From Fitch, Jacob Francis. Jacob Francis from Fitch. From St. Bernard's, Amir Gray. Amir Gray from St. Bernard. From St. Bernard's, Tyler Mangual. Tyler Mangual from St. Bernard. In your 2024 Division I tournament. Most, most outstanding, outstanding player in Division I. Curtis Marshall. Curtis Marshall of the Saints. There's your all tournament team. Your all-tournament team, Jacob Francis, Xavier Good, Amir Gray, Tyler Mangual, and your most outstanding player, Curtis Marshall. And now, athletic director, Elliot will present his trophy and banner to Mark Jones. Scott Elliott, who is the Lyman Memorial Athletic Director. accomplishment, one of the goals that they had, but the ultimate goal for this team has been Division I ever since they got the announcement that they were moving up. At first, Coach Jones was a little remiss, you know, we, we were only in Division II for a year, you know, a couple of years ago we were in Division IV, but as the season got rolling and you realized what he actually had on this roster, there's no other place that they belong yeah. than Division I. And, no. and, the, and the teams like Windsor, who are going to play in Division II, I, I don't understand it. We could talk and debate for another hour. It doesn't make sense to I me don't get it either. that you have a team that good and you play in Division II. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. Even New London, I, I don't understand why you would want to play in Division II when you have that kind of talent. You want to go against the best. If you win Division I, you're number one in the state, hands down. No Division II, three, four state champion should ever even be in the top 10. So that's what Coach Jones wanted, and that's what he'll get. I love when players are loyal to their coaches. Keith Mitchell just sent me a message. He said, Mark Jones is a great coach, but he's no Chop Parker. <laughs> we'll take a break and come back with our post-game interviews. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. I came here in 1992 not knowing a soul, and I started a law practice in New London. The community has supported us ever since. Thank you. Game day athletes, playing high school sports is going to be one of the best experiences of your life. 
I know you give 100% effort and you treat your teammates, your opponents, and your coaches and officials with respect. Are you doing the same in school? Are you showing up every day and giving 100% effort? Are you giving the respect to your classmates, your teachers, and your parents? Sure, winning is great. And give it your best today when you go out on that field. But never forget, getting a good education will be the best game you'll ever play in your life. It's all about the St. Bernard Saints and the family victory. Second year in a row, Division I. The Sports Doctors got Coach Mark Jones and the champion, St. Bernard Saints. Hi, Sports Coach. Doctor. Coach, seems like old hat you guys went in this building. It was a bit of a business trip today, but talk about the defensive end and your play on defense. No, these guys have been guarding, man. I mean, it's hard to hold the team to 39 points. Uh, they've been guarding on the perimeter, and then we've been rebounding. I mean, we're getting, we're getting really close to where we want to be at. Well, you're, you're opening the season here against East Catholic, and you said you were figuring things out. So I guess you have figured things out. Well, we'll see. I mean, we still got a lot to, to, you know, to prove and a lot to do. So we haven't proven anything yet. You know, we want to be here again. So that's the main thing. Coach, you guys haven't lost in, what, 30 league games and counting. You know, what does that mean for this group and for this program? I mean, it's a testament to these players, man. They put in the time, they put in the work, and they compete at a high level. I mean, Amir, Amari, you know, Jonah, all these, Colin, these guys have been working their butts off and for the last couple years. So I'm just proud of them. Just, you know, it's, that's hard to do, you know, and people don't understand that. It's really hard. And for them players, I don't care about me. I could care less. But for those players to put that work in and to do that, speechless now you talk about work and work not being done you guys are heading into division one that's uh that's not gonna be any kind of a picnic to get back into the Mohegan Sun no I mean they're really good man it's, that's division one so we, you know we'll take tomorrow off and then we'll get back to the drawing board well our MVP tonight is, is Ty Grudgeon yeah. seven yeah. Ty, 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 seven 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 points tonight, but, you know, Coach made some changes and put you in the starting lineup late in the season. Talk about the trust he had in you. Oh, the trust is huge. I mean, I've always trusted him and his decisions and all the coaches, and these players always give me the confidence to go out and do what I got to do. And to win this twice back-to-back -back with this group is huge. Now, you had your hands full tonight up there. Their guards are pretty good. Yeah. Good, good can play. Robinson can play. What's your mentality, you know, going in there and taking on a defensive challenge? Oh, trying to contain them as much as possible. They're really good players, so it's tough to hold them to under 10 points, but I just went in there. Mentality was to try to get stops, and that's what we did. Total team effort here by the Saints, Casey, and I, I got a feeling this group, they're not done just yet. No sports, Doctor. The Saints came marching into the Mohegan Sun, left with a championship. They're going to try to get back here. Division One's no joke, but neither are the Saints. It's been quite a night here at Mohegan Sun. Congratulations to Wheeler and to St. Bernard's. And that means that in the month of March, starting Friday, you can go down to Phillies in Norwich. You can get yourself a Wheeler or a St. Bernard sandwich on the menu, and they're gonna take care of you. That's the championship. Juice, this was a testament to the things that coaches love. Defense, effort, hustle 50 50 balls rebounding like i i don't know if you were going to give a grade tonight to the saints is there any area that they don't get an a in no and you know and because you know it, you're not going to pitch a perfect game in basketball like you can in baseball so you know you're going to live with a couple shots a couple bad passes here and there uh, they're just they, it, it, it's the mentality that i'm so impressed with because like i said when you're high hedging on a ball screen up 25 with five minutes to go in the game and you're hedging with the same intensity that you did in the first minute of the game that's a mentality that you have drilled and that the players believe in and, and accept and want and that is what gives them a chance that you know and like we like we talked about ad nauseum the, the division one tournament is a beast 
but they have a chance because of that mentality. What's going to be interesting to me as we watch some of these highlights here from the from the ball game, if you're a team, I mean, everybody in Division One that's on the Saint side of the bracket is going to school at, on this game right now. They're mm -hmm. watching. Them. If you're a team whose offense runs through high ball screens, are you watching this going, we might have to do something different? Yeah. You know, even at, as good as you might be, right? You, we, we might have to change how we approach things because they're that good at it. And, you know, when you, then you look at matchups, right? So I don't know what Colby does. I don't know what Ridgefield does specifically. But, like, those two matchups, I'd be curious to see what those two teams do in answer to that defensive effort. Yeah, and I think, you know, that what you touched on right there is going to be the key to the entire tournament. Can you take advantage of your mismatches? There will be mismatches somewhere in the game. What team can take advantage of their mismatches is going to be the team that advances. Thank you to everybody at Mohegan Sun for another fabulous night. We'll be back March 5th with Unified Basketball and hopefully some more games in the postseason for you. For all of the folks here at Mohegan Sun and for all of the game day crew, Casey O'Neill, thank you very much. Good night, everybody. You've been watching Game Day live on theday.com.